back. Did you couldn't wait? You was like, I'm ready. I'm ready. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's some background noise. You ready? Yes. <laughs> yes. Wrap up all your pleasantries. Email me. Slack. Instant message. I was getting to that, and then the music started. No, it would have took 400 more minutes. I was getting to that. No, you weren't. No, I was. No, no. no. I was. I, I know who you are. I was getting Ch to that. You would have kept on chatting it up. I was getting to that. Chat, chatting it up. Super, super chat. I was getting to that. I tried to it. send a super chat to that show but um i need to update the card but the card that's on file i don't have so i can ask you all those questions while you are on the panel oh uh, well send the super chat to me <laughs> <laughs> let's go to uh tech girl christian todd what's going on computer science barbie how you doing welcome back we are back D, how are you doing? You've been on two lives so far. I mean, Saturday is my live day. Like I, it's just what Saturdays are. I'm in these tech streets, the binary hustler. What's up, her? <laughs> so can you? I haven't heard that in forever. What's up, her? Brandy has no last name. DJ Darnell, how you doing? You like the panel discussion? Yeah, we were just talking about it. We was like, we should rotate um, panel, should, should rotate that panel amongst everybody's every YouTube quarter. channel. Yeah, I said once every quarter, quarter is, is a good thing to do it. But it's like, to cert or not to cert is the question. Yeah, to cert or not to cert is always the question, right? It It, 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 it depends on the job. It depends on who you interview with. It depends on I, again when I'm talking to like different engineering managers, they they be like, I don't care about this person, sir. We want to know can they do the job. And then there's some people that are like, hey, this person needs to have a cert. So right. I, I don't know. It it it, it is it is job dependent, right? And then it's personal person dependent because I think sometimes certs are a crutch for some people that don't want to push go they're like i need this cert or i need five certs before i can even start my job hunt and it's just like like i said before a lot of people are great test takers they can knock these certs out of the box study get the certs but if any practical knowledge it's like lights out yeah so i've been in 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 some of the aws classes and the aws teacher will tell you just go just go take the cert fill it and then that way you'll know what's on the test and then come back and, and go over what you failed. Um, go down the actual line of line items of what it is and then go from there. And then um, they say, go take the cert again. So I've had, I've had, I've, I've, I've been in AWS classes where, where the, where the trainer is like, yeah, you'll get, you this is how you get the cert. And then it, they're like, take this cert and then go to follow and we take another cert because it's really close to each other so that you can keep that knowledge and just add in what you didn't know so you can get a cert back to back. So I've seen some AWS trainers tell people take this, take these three certs in a week. That don't mean you know it. It just means you know how to you know how to pass an exam. And so it does that carry weight? Sure. Uh, but does it carry weight when you gotta do the work? Yeah, you know that. So it's it really is really really dependent on who it is, right? And and what they're and what they're requiring. I could see you needing a cert if you are an architect. I could see you needing certs uh, for that because maybe you are maybe maybe you're an architect and you're working and reporting directly to a CTO or an, or maybe you're reporting directly to X Y and Z and the customer is requiring that of you. And so, therefore, the customer, because the customer is driving that and they're paying for that, they'll require that. So I've and seen, I've seen cannabis as does the same opinion on certs apply to decrees too? I feel I yes I yes because it's job dependent, it's industry dependent. 
Like some people don't have a search or don't have a degree and are very well paid in tech because they know the tech. And a lot of people in tech have degrees that are non-technical. The CEO at one time of Meetup had a degree in biology. But she was a CTO. And the reason why she got hired because of a network and the reason why she, and it's on our, on our YouTube channel. And the reason why she got hired is because they said she did well with people, right? So sometimes it's not about the cert. It's about how well you're, you're with people, but that is job dependent, right? I know managers that are, uh, are head of engineering uh, and don't know Linux at all. And the Linux in the job is Linux focused and they don't, they've never touched it, but that wasn't a requirement for them to get hired. So uh, again, it is, Job dependent, person dependent. It it could be a number of factors when, when when we're talking about that. And leadership in tech has more to do with the people skills than the tech skills. Because just think about how many leaders at your job and they don't know diddly squat on diddly, and you just like, why are you managing me? Yeah. But it's a people game, so they want people that know how to play the politics. Yeah, um, DJ Jarnett, does the does the cert get you through the system? Yes and no. It depends on the. It depends on. It depends on who, what you're interviewing for, and what it is. Right. It it depends. Um, as you go up the ladder, um, and you, as you move up the ladder, some jobs require certs and some don't. Like I say, it's it is really truly job dependent. And it also depends on who's interviewing you. Right. Uh, I'll give you a prime example. Everybody say it's cert dependent, right? So I'm gonna give you this example. How many of you have ever got a, ever even thought about getting a certification in Oracle and work on Oracle Linux and then uh, work at anything in Oracle? And then people will be like, well, is Oracle still around? Yep, they're still around. But if I told you that, if I told you go get a certain Oracle, would you go get it? No, you wouldn't. You'll go look at it. You'll go look and see what it is. But what if the company that you're going to work for is using Oracle Linux or using the Oracle database? And they want you to know what a database is or what an SQL database is and how to do queries, right? So now it's like, okay, do you have the knowledge versus do you have the cert? Right. Can you can with, you, those, with right. those job systems like the ATS system is also keywords. So at the end of the day, is it or is automation coming up? Is Linux is provisioning? Is you know is virtualization like all those other keywords in sentence structures? Are they coming up in the search as well? Because people are looking for specifics. Because yeah. at the end of the day, people that are looking for your skill set will find you. Yeah. And when I'm looking at people, I'm literally looking at what you did in the job. Right. Like if you said, hey, I played with Jenkins. OK, well, did you use Jenkins to set up executors? Have you done pipelines in Jenkins? Have you done X, Y and Z in Jenkins? Right there. And then <laughs> here's the other thing. Some things don't even have certs. <laughs> some things don't even have certs. Uh, some, 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 some things that you use don't have certs. GitLab just came out with their cert probably maybe a year or two ago, right? There was no, there was no certification for you to get a, 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 a Git cert, right? Um, and, and, and when you say, oh, I got me, a, I'm, I'm getting a cert. How many people got a cert in Java? How many people have their Python certification, Right. How many people have their Java certification? Right? Those are certs out there, but you're not going to get those. Right? So, you know, it's like it's like we're playing this game of should I get a cert or should I not get a cert versus the game of do I have, do I know what I'm talking about and do I have the experience? You can go get the cert to solidify what you know, sure. But when you get in the interview, I'm, I, I don't care about your cert. I'm still going to ask you questions anyway. I'm going to ask you behavior questions. I'm going to ask you, do you know how to scale this up? Do you know how to troubleshoot this? Right? Do you know how to fix this? Do you know how to fix that? Right? 
I'm, I'm going to ask you that. But also, you know, that and also networking is key. That's why there's organizations like Women in Linux where we do the groundwork, make the and, and get you in the network. And people are calling us, asking us for people with the skills. They don't say, do the, your people have this skirt and this cert and this cert? We They say, we need more people like you. Can you find us more people like you? How many search you got, Tamika? Uh, right now, just two. I had four at one time. But... Okay, and just over the span of your, and these are recent certifications, right? No, the no the security plus. I always had that. I had my open stack. I had an open shift. Um, Linux. I never really. I pursued it, and then I was like, mm, it is what it is. But I'm saying that you got those on the job. <laughs> like, no, I didn't get some of those yeah, on the job. Yeah. So, the security plus, it was mandatory. Yeah, yeah, the security plus was mandatory, but like the open stack and open shift wasn't mandatory. No, it was just like, something I, I wanted to do. You know, you were on my like, oh, I'm a study. Yeah, I'm I was just, I, I was just study. yeah. You know, you get on, I'm a skill up phase. Yeah, that's what that was. And then when it came down to my saying, sir, I I was I I want to teach more, and I want to be able to uh, provide a uh, a better uh, bridge between what people actually want and what you're actually learning in this class. And so when you when you do when you do get when I do teach, I want to be able to provide that outlook. Because I feel like uh, oftentimes people who in the constant mode of teaching all the time, they don't really have the value add into how the company is actually going to use a particular product. And so there has to be some level set there, right? Um, one thing that CompTIA does on the Linux side is um, they take, they take, um, they take, they bring in people from, um, all Linux background from different Linux background, and you sit in Chicago for a week and you talk about what it is that you that you do every day for Linux. So when I say Linux, a lot of people be like, "Well, that's just Linux. What about all these other things?" Linux encompasses so many things. Like there's Linux, then there's Ansible with automation, then there's Puppet with automation or configuration management, if you want to get particular. And then there is understanding how to uh, do uh, Python and Bash scripts. And then we have, then we have to, then we start talking about um, not just Python and Bash scripts, but then we start talking about, well, which cloud are we going to use and, 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 and how does that look and Terraform and uh, using Packer and then using uh, creating images and th then build in the image builder. And then we start talking about uh, security and how to lock those things down from a cloud perspective, from an instance perspective, from a container perspective, when we talk about containers. So when I talk about Linux, I mean, I'm talking about a lot of different things, but I'm just saying as a foundation, uh, Linux is a foundation and you can build up. And if you don't want to take the time to build up into other things, if you just really want to go get a job just doing sysadmin work, you could. Right. So that's where Linux for me comes in at. Um, could you go get a job if you took the if you took the the entry level to um, AWS, the cloud practitioner, can you go get a job at a company? And that's that's where I'm saying, right? I can go get a job with my RCSA. I may not get paid, you know, two hundred thousand to start out with, but I can get a job where I can say, okay, hey, I'm making eighty thousand, ninety thousand uh, as this entry level person because I'm a learn Ansible anyway. So Ansible is kind of like wrapped up into that, and then move on and say, well, I started learning cybersecurity or I started learning automation or automation with Terraform or our cloud formation or Azure DevOps. I started learning these other things, right? So it's just, it, it is one of those things that we, that I try to focus in on to show you that 
hey, here's something that you can do to get you something to eat right now. Once you get you something to eat, then figure out where you want to go. If you want to go to Kubernetes, if you want to go down OpenShift, Anthos, if you want to go down Rancher, you can. If you want to go down uh, understanding uh, network automation and scaling in networks, you can. If you want to do Cisco DevNet, you can. If you want to go and learn about um, um, how 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 to how to uh, build out a cloud and work with just hardware and working with Dell and HP on their latest storage devices and hardware devices, you can because you would have that flexibility to to see and maneuver in and out of those lanes accordingly. So now your view of tech is this wide versus your view of tech was this before. So that's the purpose of us having women in Linux. And that is the purpose of us wanting wanting more people to understand uh, what your options are, right? Um, you'll get into spaces and you'll start learning Python and you're like, that's all I know is Python. Well, what about Rust? Where you start getting into uh, um, FinTech and AI and machine, and machine learning as well too. And then you say, well, I don't want to know none of that. I want to go C++. Well, you, now you're getting into uh, quant developers. I posted on our, on our Slack where, uh, and I talked about it on our show, where they were hiring people who, who knew C++ um, and, 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 and wanted to be a quant developer, and they were paying $2 million for it, right? And that was under DeFi, right? So, uh, again, we have these nuances and conversations I have never really met anyone that was C++ certified, right? So <laughs> they just know what they know and they know how to use the code and what it needs to do and so forth from different angles. Yeah, and on, on the dev side, you don't really find many people who are certified in Java or certified in XYZ. They just have a number of years they have been working in the field and so forth and so on. So I hope that makes sense for everybody, right? So we get into the conversations about um, about certifications um, and getting in the door, but you really need to be using your network. You need to be utilizing your skills and you do need to have some social as, uh, what you call it, say some social capital out there, uh, whether, whether it's a GitHub or a GitLab whether you worked on an open source project, whether you created something, whether you helped troubleshoot something, or whether you're talking about something, whether you're writing something or whatnot. All right. So again, that's that's just what it is, right? Can you get React certified? Is there a React cert? I don't even know. Can you get a React certified? I know you can get Go certified. I know you can get Rust certified, but can you get Go cert? I mean, um, React certified. I don't know. Can you get JavaScript certified? I don't know. Uh, just asking question. I had to look it up, but again, just never really saw any anything like that. Only when it comes down to getting on the infrastructure side and cloud side, we're like, oh yeah, we need to have these certifications, and then that don't people don't even really care about it. Was there a change in the IT field at some point? Where yeah, it was a change, and that change was it went. It ain't enough people. That's what the change was. It ain't enough people. And the change became like, man, it ain't enough people. So people were like, well, how do we get people in? And so, I, I mean, we started Women in Linux six years ago. Um, uh, when was um, a cloud guru founded? Uh, 2012, maybe? Maybe 2015? Um, a cloud guru, 2015. I've been doing Linux since 2000. When was Linux Academy founded? Um, uh, Linux Academy. Linux Academy was found, founded in 2012. I started in 2000, right? So you had LPI before them. You had Red Hat. Red Hat wasn't doing certifications um, in terms of the uh, Red Hat learning subscription. They wasn't doing that. That just recently came about in 2015. And the reason why I know, because I bought it the first time that it came out. I spent $5,000 when it first came out. That's how I know. And I was still working at LTC when that happened. And me and Mike signed, me and my coworker Mike signed up for it. And we both spent our money to sign up for that. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, certs, 
Search is a new thing. It's not like it's like search been around forever. Search is really a new thing. So to be Linux certified, people are like, oh, that's great. That's cool. But if you didn't, that people are just happy that you knew it. Now to get the Red Hat certification, people are like, okay, cool. You got it. Or you get the L pick or the L plus. That's cool. But now people are like, well, do you have these other 10 certs? And, or do you have knowledge of these other 10 things? So I always say, look, get in and figure out what you like the best. If you feel like you want to go all cloud and you will never want to deal with VMware, cool. If you feel like you don't want to do anything um, Oracle or whatnot, and you just want to go VMware, you can. Maybe you don't want to deal with any of those and you just want to deal directly with Cisco, Palo Alto, WatchGuard, uh, networking. You can do that as well, too. That's the beauty of having the, these careers and ideas and stuff in tech. You can do whatever it is that you want to do. And what's so cool about it, you can switch lanes if you want to. But you have to get the skills in order to switch the lanes. And you need to be building up your network so it can make you lane switchable, is if you want to look at it like that. <laughs> <laughs> lane switchable if you want to look at it like that uh so that that's what i've seen so in terms of networking what do have i seen in terms of networking um being able to get out there and actually present topics right um i tell people all the time come on the show present a topic come to our wednesday show present a topic why does that matter because now you can utilize that to say hey i presented a topic i know i'm I'm becoming the subject matter expert, or a SME or SME about this subject. And now you can pre start presenting at conferences. Now, when you start presenting at conferences, whether they're virtual or in person, now you start networking people. People start asking you questions. They start asking you to be on panels. They start asking you to come to their to their actual company to do a presentation. They start asking you to to say, "Hey, what, what can can you show me this? I my, my team needs to learn this. Can you show us that?" Right. So those things actually come up. So that's though that's networking. Being being here is networking. If y'all don't exchange information, if you're not exchanging information in Slack, you're just coming here every week and you're not utilizing the platform the way you should be utilizing the platform. The and reason why I, I, I yeah, the reason yeah. why I ended up on Keep It Techie is because I went into the chats and and started talking and he's like, oh, you got a room, oh, you got a channel, oh, snap. So let me check it out. Oh, I didn't even know you had a channel. Yep, got a channel. Well, let's go. Let's and not talk. just talking, asking questions. Yeah. I know it, asking questions gets you so, so far. Asking the questions, showing up, going to events. It's just like how you network in the real world versus, versus virtually. And I think it's so much easier to network virtually than it is in the real world, you know? Um, I wanted to double back to the certification topic. Mm -hmm. Like, I think, you know, for me, everything is a mindset, right? So the vendors, these tech vendors like an AWS, a Red Hat, Google, they need to teach you how to use their products, right? So basically, the, all the search is is souped up user documentation. And the certification is a value add. So they give you all this information you can learn for free. And the value add is because you've, you've, you've read through all this information. Now you can take the certification and you can market yourself because you've, you've done all of this. So it's value add. So you also have to know how to use that to your benefit without necessarily getting the cert. Because you need to know how it applies to the technology that you're using on the daily basis. Yeah. I don't use GCP at work at all. <laughs> I want it, but because at Women in Linux, we say get a cloud, pick any cloud. I want to do Google Cloud. Yep. You have to you have to know how to apply everything that you learn to the tech that you are using or the tech where you want to go. Yep. That was just where I wanted to go back. No problem. But this is the other thing too, right? You'll find some companies that are like we don't want to get vendor locked in, so we don't want none of them, right? Right? We don't want to get vendor locked in. 
Uh, and when they don't want to get vendor locked in, they'll be like, well, we don't want to use just AWS or such and such and such and such and such. We want to use AWS, GCP, Oracle. We want to be able to go where we want to go. So maybe they in internal, they'll hire a group of people to build a tool to allow them to go anywhere they want to go. Right. So now that's different. Because now we're start talking about we're building tools from scratch. And then you got some people that are like, it's better to buy it. How much does it cost? Go buy it. And then let's just get that implemented because we ain't got time to build. We need to buy it and let's keep it pushing. So again, there is there is this, there is the, there is you you have to do your due diligence and reading the actual job description and asking questions about the traje trajectory of where they're trying to take the company and where the team is trying to go, because now that gives you some insight about your skills and what skills you may need to add and what skills that you already have, right? And, and what all and value add you may bring to that company or what value add that company needs, right? Sometimes the company don't even know they need it. Oh my gosh. Can you say that again? And for me, I'm like, I, there's like this conversation going, it's always conversation going on on the back end that you never know what at work until somebody mentions it in the meeting. And you're just like, so when were they going to tell me? So for me, I'm getting phased into somebody else's position. No one told me. So I'm asking this person, you know, what courses or skills do you think I need to focus on? to help you do what you do on a daily basis. It's crickets. Like people don't know. And either it's they don't know, um, they are doing way too much, <laughs> or or it's it's they know and they don't want to share. Right. Well, well I was gonna say that or they don't or they know or they know they know and they don't want to share or they want you to have the foresight to come to them to say, based upon our interaction, I see that you need help with X, Y, and Z. So here's what I'm going to study. Does this seem right to you? Right. And, 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 and the problem with that is it le still leaves you guessing because it never gives a definitive answer mm -hmm. as to what that person actually needs. But it also doesn't give the definitive answer because the person may not know that that's what you need. And so right. they don't even really know how to answer it. Right. And then for, for me as well, is that when the higher ups come back to me and ask me, have I engaged this person? I, it, to me, now I have a paper trail of what I've done to engage this person in the response that I've gotten back. Yep. To cover my butt because it's just like okay i can only do what this person allows me to do and i can go around assuming what this person does but that i still have my daily job responsibilities that i have to do so i don't have the time the energy or the effort to go around guessing in order to make this person's job better i still have to to do my job to the best of my ability and study up what i need to study in order to do that yeah, it's called hazing. You just going through a hazing phase. I mean, you know, it was so. Well, let me tell you. I didn't even tell you this. It was so funny because we had a, um, we had a stand up the other day. Well, we had a team meeting. It wasn't a stand up, and um, he's not a team lead, a team lead, but he's like an active, like team lead in training, possibly. But he had a report, and on the report, it had the four people on our team, and everybody had a name, and my little box and little color was just like no name. And I was like, this, this me not having a name on this report says so much about how information is disseminated to me. But luckily, because I am who I am, is I go and talk to the program manager and get the, inter the, the information from the horse's mouth. So... I hear everything that she says. And so now when I'm in meetings, I go speak up to the people that I need to go speak up to and make my set my presence known to those people and not the peons on, on my level because they're not going to get me where. They're going to get you where you need to be. They're not going to get me where I need to go. 
Shout out to uh, DJ Darnell, OMG, all this real world insight, rethinking my life. Hey, man, no, we're not trying to say rethink your life. We don't want you to start over. Yes, we are. We're just trying to say, we are trying to say rethink your life. I don't, I don't want you to start from scratch is what I'm saying. Perspective. I don't want we you to start are. from scratch. I don't want you to start from scratch. I want you no, to just we are always open, open, you open your mind to what yes. some yes. possibilities. Yes. We're not, not going to throw out the bathwater now. Sometimes we are, but, you know, it's definitely <laughs> bloom where you plant it. Like, we are all hardworking professionals. And a lot of times we get people that are coming and they've been in industries, the nursing industry, accounting the accounting, banking, industries, DOD for 20 plus years. And they're like looking at help desk jobs. And we're just like, oh, no, oh, no, 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 no. We're not throwing away all that good information, that good experience in order for you to start at the help desk at tech. We will be doing you a disservice. Right. Right. And then, and then another thing, too, is sometimes it's better for you to just go attend some of these conferences like a aws or whatever conference and the reason why i say attend those conferences is so that you can then understand like what they what customers they have that they are using so when you go look at like who's speaking and where they're speaking from those are jobs those people have jobs at those companies so you have to have the foresight to say, well, um, I see Oracle is coming to speak at the AWS conference. What is Oracle doing speaking at the AWS conference? Are they launching something on their platform? Why is Palo Alto speaking at that conference? Why at the Azure conference or at the Google conference, why is somebody come, coming over here to speak? What are they going to talk about and start looking and investigating jobs and, and so forth, right? And, and then we talked about it on the panel a little bit is sometimes you don't want to go work for somebody. You can set up partnerships with companies. And, and as you set up partnerships with companies, you now become the actual entrepreneur or the contractor. And then maybe they start tossing work your way for you to go do work. Because sometimes uh, the CompTIA does this. CompTIA does it, Oracle does it, AWS, Azure, all of them do it. All of them do it. They have smaller companies, 10 or 12 people, and they just toss work their way. They're a gold partner. They're a silver partner. They're this partner. And they just toss work their way in order for them to do it. And so sometimes that work there may get tossed their way as a company. And say you got four people that are working in the company. It may be $100,000. It may be $50,000. It may be ten thousand dollars. It depends. So now you, now you're not looking at yourself as the worker. You're looking at yourself as the employer, and you have people that go out there and do the work for you, mm -hmm. right? So you, there's different ways to look at this when we're talking about what what type of work are we doing. Um, you may not get a certification like a technical certification. You may get a sales certification. You may be able to sell a product. You may you may focus in on just selling that particular product. Mm -hmm. There's some people that don't have technical certifications. They just sell the product. They just sell AWS. They just sell Office 365. That's all they do. They and don't the have the sell specific documentation and training towards selling the product because yep. it's definitely a different communication. You're only selling if the if the, the client has more in-depth questions in regards to the tech, that is passed off to a sales engineer that knows more about the technical aspects. And Tam, when you were talking about conferences and looking at the vendors, what they're speaking at specific conferences for, you don't have to wait to for an upcoming coming conference you can go back to an old conference because 99.9% .9 of these conferences are posted online and so you can go through all these years of conferences to see what they're talking about yep salute to uh before the billions um but there's just so many things that you know we got to get you know out of our heads that are not what it is and and retrain I says. Uh hey Ray Beckham, how you doing? Okay, cool. Yo, R E C S A, we meet every Wednesday. We think we're on chapter eleven now. 
I think we're on chapter 11. Or did I finish chapter 11? I can't remember. I can't remember. I think I finished chapter 11. I think you finished chapter 11 because we did chapter 10 last week. So I'm pretty sure you went through that. Because okay. it was like an extra hour, hour and a half over. So I think you finished that. And <laughs> you you should have been saying the extra hour and a half over. Because <laughs> I'm petty. <laughs> I mean, anyway, you know, you know, now that you're in a total different time zone, you just be like, gay, all gas, no break. And I'm just like, yeah. hey, we gotta go. I love it though. I love it. I love it. And people show up every week and they be here for it. So I'm, all right, you know, I'm just giving you shit. That's okay. So let's get to the intro and let's get to the show. All right. We are, <laughs> are we doing it. an intro? Yeah. We Do are. We need an intro? I am Tam. Uh, this is D. Uh, no, that's D. All right, and um, you can find us on social media at womeninlinux.org. You can also find us on meetup.com. I mean, hold on, back up. You can find us across social media at Women in Linux. You can go to the website and find us at womeninlinux.org. You can uh, shout out, that's right, all gas, all gas, that's what we do. Thanks, Ray. Thanks, Ray, for the super chat. We appreciate you. Um, you can find us on social media, including Clubhouse at Women in Linux. I have not been live on Clubhouse. I've been busy. As you really? Can see. I've been busy, uh, as you can see. Uh, we also have, I, I don't know, now I'm going to interrupt the broadcast right now and be like, D, when Me? are we doing, yeah, when are we doing Binary Hustlers? What's up? When are we doing a Binary Hustler? Yeah. We can do that. You know, you're going to Vegas. So either before or after, when you have time, because you just said you were busy. D, stop stalling. I'm not stalling. I'm here for everything. Put, put it on the calendar. Pick a day. We're doing it tonight. Okay, I'm going to look at we, the calendar. We're we doing it tonight. After I eat. I have to eat. I have to eat. I have to eat. Unless you want to, unless you want to Uber eat your friend something so I'll be ready for the binary hustlers. Well, I say we do it tonight. I say we do it tonight. Well, let's let's aim for like maybe nine or ten tonight. Let's go later on. Oh, you definitely sending me some snacks. I'm talking about yeah. No, nah, I'm saying I'm sending you some food. Put a yeah, one in the chat. I'm so put a one. Put a one in the chat if y'all ready for binary hustlers. All right. So binary hustlers, right? So they give y'all some some idea of why I have had the third show. Look, let me check it. Check it. So this is the nonprofit side, right? We can't really say what we want to say over here on the nonprofit side because, you know, people be like, oh, how can they be a nonprofit? And they're sounding like this. Oh, my God. What are you doing? But on Binary Hustlers, After Dark, <laughs> yeah, buddy. Already. Let me get my glasses. Let me get my glasses. Let my glasses. Oh, let me get my glasses. But don't be fooled. Just because we are going to binary hustlers, do not negate the fact that we are the founders of a nonprofit. Uh, so I don't know how much grimy we can get. Hit but phone, I mean, police. our personal um, introspective on things is quite funny. Hit the hit phone, police. Here we go. Here come the phone, police. Y'all already who know. Is who the phone po Am I the know. phone, police? Here come the fun police. Oh Am I god. The oh god. Oh god. Am I the popo? A uh, type of two in the chat is if D is the fun police. Type of two Am in I the, the chat. Type of two in the chat. Type of two in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> if D I is swear the you trying to blame me. Why are you trying to play me like I'm soft? <laughs> D fight type of two in the Why chat. Why are you trying to play me like police. I'm soft, son? <laughs> Why? Why are you trying to play? Uh, Why are you trying to play me like I'm soft? I don't. I don't. Keep don't them tools coming. Keep them tools coming. Let me do my I two don't over appreciate here. It. How Let about me do that? my two over here. Because D is the fun police. Oh, come on, tech girl, Christian. You, you, you get, get what? I'm going to put you in the timeout. <laughs> you know what? That's good. I'm glad people think I'm the fun police. That's that's a great thing. I'm D, glad. Here come D with the being the fun. Th there you go. You know what? Don't plead the fifth. 
you know what? I'm not I'm not gonna even sweat it because you know what? I got a people degree. I know how you do. Now you want to try me to prove yeah. that I'm not, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm fun. I don't you. care. Don't be offended. I'm not offended. Look, you ain't gonna say that. That's how that's why you know she the fun of police. For what? Why why? Why no, she I? won't be able to find you? She ain't gonna find you down to earth. She ain't gonna find you. Why? Why do why? I, I don't I don't see the reason why we just why we just said type of one or two. Why do I have to prove my love? You ain't gotta prove nothing. We I just asked the question. What you need to prove? What you feel why? you need to that's prove? what I'm saying. Why I got to prove it? D you don't need to prove nothing. You don't need to prove nothing. You already proved it. You are the fun police. Okay. So we are women in Linux. I'm the fun one. D is the fun police. D is the fun <laughs> police. <laughs> That's right, tech girl Christian. That's right. She is the fun police. I like it. She is the fun police. We are women in Linux. You can find us on social media at women in Linux across social media. And if you would like to connect with us after we do our shows, you can find us in Slack. Uh, you can find us in Slack. D, can I get my, my thingy? Yeah, if you can hit connect right here, that's going to drop you and put your email in there. That's going to send you to our Slack group. Once you get in our Slack group, we will then have job postings. We have a channel for creating wealth. We have um, not just a channel for creating wealth. We have a channel for pretty much everything, cryptocurrency jobs, uh, DOD contracts. Uh, I can't think of everything. It's like 80 channels in there. So if, you, if you're looking for something or whatnot, we have them. So, you know, get busy, right? And... If you would like to donate with us, you can donate here with the Super Chat or you can donate with your time. I think the memberships are back, too. I need to broadcast the memberships. We get we, we are doing some membership stuff. Um, I've been debating on whether or not I did set up a Patreon. I just haven't went through it and did everything we need to do on it. I was like, do I want to do a Patreon? Because I got guests that want to come on and talk um, from how to do your... And this may go under binary hustles. I'm not sure where it should go. But things like um how do you get a, a how do you roll your your um how do you get your next car in a business loan? Say you want to get a Range Rover or if you want to get um a Jaguar or a Mercedes or if you want to get a Nissan or whatever the case may be, how do you put that into your business? Uh, what does that look like? What are your options? What should you be negotiating for? So I have people that are coming on for that. Also, we have people that are quantum physics, um, uh, PhD. Um, they got their, their PhD in quantum physics and what is going on in the world of uh, quantum physics um, as well. Uh, I have people that are coming on from AWS and talking about the internal uh for aws and ai machine learning and trading we have people who are uh investors and they're looking uh to just talk about how to start an investment group uh, an investment fund what does that look like i have so many things lined up that um that I don't know if it should go under women in Linux or should it go under binary hustlers or should that go under 50 50 geek? I don't know. Um, this it's been a been a, a big toss up with that. Um, I think binary hmm. hustlers is more like lifestyle in the sense of the day in the life of a binary hustler, like oh, real G. So, huh? I said, of oh, a real G. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I think that, you know, cars and, and not necessarily our cars, but, you know, how, how to get what you want. You know, we tell you here, you know, about in Tech Stocks and Jobs about wealth building. Um, we wealth can help wealth build. You say? Wealth accumulation. Wealth accumulation. Um, here on Howie Linux, we definitely let you know what's going on in tech, exposure to new things um, in technology. And I think Binary Hustlers is just a more um, independent look at the day in the life. Like, what do you do? What 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 is your lives like? Who who are you around? What 
what what is it what is a techie what is a binary hustler what are the other avenues that are out there you know when you live um, this tech life because it's definitely um, a lifestyle because you know the things that you do and it's a co a constant um, learning you know you learning new things and information is coming so fast and you know we look around and we just like you know everything in tech has started you know like in the dinosaur days and all the technology that we're using is basically fairly recent YouTube fairly recent you know so. Mm -hmm. We just yep. want you to um, see what that is and, you know, how tech actually moves the things that we're, we're speaking about. So I see us like more on the go with things, maybe pop up different areas. We might not be in the office um, doing the shows. It might be a later show, you know, based on what we have and just a little drill down. We might a little, we get a little comfortable, it might be BYOB. So, you know, definitely a more laid back type of show. Yeah. And then we want you to bring your drinks, you know, you have your little drinks and stuff like that. We're not ratchet. That's just not what we do. Ratchet. <laughs> What'd you say? Huh? Ratchet. I'm, you said I'm ratchet? Mm -hmm. Okay. Fun police. But that's what I heard in the streets. You heard I was ratchet in the streets? I heard he was ratchet in the streets. <laughs> you, you, heard, you heard, so when you say I'm ratchet in the streets, that gives me this to say that if I go to the if I go to the go to eat, I'm gonna get up on the table and I'm a, I'm a twerk. I don't know if you're going to twerk when you get on the table, but I know you, I you have been known for a tabletop or two. I have been known for a tabletop or two. You've me? been known for a tabletop or two. Mm -hmm. Moi. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Here come here, here come the lies. One, along with the fun police is the lies. <laughs> never, never would I lie about that. Let me I put, I seen you with my eyes. You ain't never seen me on no table. All all four of them I seen you. You ain't never seen me on table. Let I me, did. Put, let me put my let I me did. put my let me put my hater blockers on. Let me put my hate my blockers put your on. Put hater blockers on. Oh, let me put my hater blockers on. Put them on. Oh, 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 let me block. Block them out there because you shine. Let me, block. Let me get my one. Oh, oh. Use you it in his favor. Oh. Block the haters. <laughs> you do it. Block this hate. What? You, you, you on fire today. She going to be on fire tonight, y'all. Oh, me? snap. Let me tell you, not I. Y'all already talk, called me the fun police, so how am you I? You are. Like you are the fun police. We know that. Embrace it, Dion. Embrace it. When is the last time I blocked your phone? Wait, 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 embrace it, my G. When's the last time I blocked Come your phone? Embrace it, fun. You are the fun police. I can't. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Oh, we might red table talk you. Tam is probably on red table talk. I ain't gonna red table talk you. Me, only thing I'm gonna say is is this. <laughs> <laughs> this me on my BS. Red table talk moment. No, no, this me on my BS. Uh, Don't come in here screaming about you making fifty thousand and you a high value man. Oh no, that that none of those conversations become. I don't want. It, don't even give me when it comes to the manosphere. I am I am the fun police. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to talk about it. Don't bring it into my space. It scratches every nerve in my being. Every nerve. Every last nerve in my being. Every last nerve. It's Why? such a waste of time. Fun police. FP. Don't do, don't do that one. Yes, I am. When it comes to the manosphere, I am the fun police. I agree. A thousand percent. Don't do it. I can't bring up high value. Can I no. bring up? I can't bring up nothing. No. High value. No. Mm -mm. I can't talk about no. two parent homes. No. I can't talk about no. all I can't talk no. about all these black women no. I see making thirty six thousand no. dollars. No. I can't share that I make my $37,000 and, and I'm able to afford. I said uh, what I said. I can't do that. What? I can't bring up how I make my $37,000. No. 
I I mean, you know, I, I made. No, I don't know. I made thirty-seven thousand dollars, and I and 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 I know how to cook and clean and and, and be submissive, right? I can't bring that up. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> so, for those that are looking for a one-on-one, -on -one, that are looking for a little bit more help, some one-on-one -on -one from Tam or the Fun Police. <laughs> Please make sure to stop by our Calendly link down below and go ahead and schedule a time. We do one-on-one -on -one sessions. We do <laughs> resume reviews. We talk about your career, path, management, or all that other good stuff. And I try to introduce people to other people. If I did not introduce you to someone, please notify me because sometimes things slip my mind. So I can make sure I get you in front of folks. And we have recruiters in our Slack too, so don't feel alone. Again, um, again, donating with your time is one thing and donating with your mother money is another. And we try to encourage you to do which one you ever prefer. Um, but we also want you to be able to be comfortable with whatever it is that you do and grow, right? That's what the environment is for, it's for you to grow, it's for you to build, it's for you to network. I had to go check on Just Jay because I ain't seen Just Jay in a long time. I had to go check on her, uh, you know, see how she doing. Uh, we don't, you know, you know, we want you. We want we miss our people. Um, we Kevin, do. We do. Kevin was on, I ain't, I ain't seen. Um, I just her name just Lynn. I ain't seen Lynn. Um, Lynn got a boo. Lynn. Lynn had a new boo, so that's probably why we haven't seen Lynn. Kevin did stop by earlier at the earlier I show, it. and because it was so crazy that he peeked in today, is I was going to hit him up in Slack because I was like, "Man, who haven't I saw?" And I was like, "It's Kevin," and so he came in today. So we ain't seen both of the run. both of the Natashas. We ain't seen both of we them. We haven't seen both of the Natashas, yeah. Natasha and Natasha. Yep, we haven't um, seen Fran. I, I had to go check on friend. He had you know, seen friend. You know, hey, uh, Kevin said he like I'm here. <laughs> <You bet. laughs> well, I, I mean, we do we do check on people, right? Um, um, I go check on Tracy from time to time. Uh, you know, I've had I, I've I've met people in person. and They ask me, "Are you? Do you really do this? I really. This is really my life. I'm a real person. I have no reason to lie to you, you you know about what i do and how to make money and so forth i don't want yeah mama do it i was like well we ain't seen you i ain't seen you on on the first show either i right? glad she can stop by today yeah and we know you people are out here living your lives and plotting your plans and implementing all these things that you learn so you know when we we give you a piece and the freedom to do that, but every so often you gotta pop in and, and and tell your cousins where you at. Yeah. Um you gotta check in. That's Tam's yeah. favorite one every morning. You ain't check on me. You ain't check on me. You ain't, <laughs> you ain't check, check on me. me. So we're gonna check on you. We don't want people being in the house and they didn't slip and fail and can't get up. Like you need to check in. It is mandatory, it's part of the community. That's why you have a community for accountability. And for people, you know, it's good to know that somebody is looking out for you. Yep. All right. So let's get like crazy. and subscribe. If it's your first time here, go ahead and subscribe. If it's your second time here and you didn't subscribe the first time, go ahead and subscribe. Go ahead and hit the, the like button. It's about 45 of y'all here that I only see 39 likes. That means somebody is doing something else. Go ahead and hit that. If I can hit the like twice, I would hit the like twice. So be honest, was it? I, I want to make sure I say Brenzy, uh, nineteen sixty nine. How you doing? And thank you for being here. You could have been other places, but you're here. All right. Uh, we want to make so sure that outside today. Yes, it's, it's, it's not. Well, it was windy yesterday. It's sunny today. I, I need to wash. I need to wash the car. It's been. It's filthy. So I need to get that. I, I, I need to do that. Well, Given my time constraints, I don't. I don't have time. It's already five o'clock here. I'm not gonna have time to wash anything today. 
I'm not easy. I'm going to have to get up in the morning and do one. You said, I'm Kevin said, I'm getting my money together to buy some land. Get, that, get, your, get your paper together to go buy you some land. Kevin, get your, Kevin, get your $45,000 together. I'm just <laughs> Go fuck it. <laughs> and I'm going to add my 36000 You get your forty five and your thirty six, and we can be great together. And All right. 45 cents, I got it. <laughs> I got, I, I got, I got the extras. Well, you know that's what they say. The average black man makes forty five thousand. So I'm just going. There you that. go again. <laughs> Stop that! Hey. I'm get you. You gonna get the boot from your own show? That's a shame. I just go into the chat. No, no, Matt, you will not go in the chat. Going to the chat. You won't go in. The, you will. I will ban you from the chat, Matt. It's okay. Well, you love me. You'll be back. I'll be back. All right. So, check it. Uh, I don't know if y'all have been seeing this, but desperate times companies have been buying washing machines just to rip out the chips. Right, so they they're taking out the they're taking out chips from the washing machine. ASML is currently one of the biggest, if not really, uh, the biggest companies that build lithography machines used for fabrication of chips. In plain English, <laughs> ASML, which is a ticker symbol, you should check them out. Um, is uh, makes critical equipment used for manufacturing. Of semiconductors, so it goes without saying it's one of the of the giants that are closely monitoring the evolution of the evolution of crises. And what you're also witnessing is that people are now starting to say, "Well, screw the chips. We're gonna build around it by using the software. Um, so we're gonna use software to, in orders to help us with these chips." Oh, and that looks kind of small on the screen. Let me blow that up. All right. It says now, according to Peter Winnick, things aren't uh, aren't aren't by any means looking good. In his company earnings call earlier this week, Winnick revealed something that people believed was a joke. Some firms out there are buying washing machines just to rip out the chips and then use them industrial in industrial models, so they may be in your car. In other words, the chip shortage has become so destructive that some of the most affected companies buy other products, tear them apart, extract the chips, and then use them in their own uh, applications. So we may be seeing household appliances prices go up. And we also may be seeing a shortage as well, too, because we need more houses, but we don't have enough uh, enough, uh, we need more housing. We don't have enough houses, and then now we're starting to see that uh, washing machines may be getting their chips ripped out, so they're just buying GE's electric or Whirlpool or Samsung and then ripping the chips out. And now they're ripping the chips out. Now you got a machine without it. Now, what would it look like to have a washing machine without a chip? What does that look like? Can you can your washing machine? be a, a IOT device and the and the process of washing your clothes be handled in the cloud where you set instructions up if you press a one it's gonna do something that's gonna trigger something to trigger something I don't know you know how I feel about all those smart devices I might be the police <laughs> You are the phone police. It's happening everywhere uh, when it's explained without actually naming the companies that have turned to such extreme workarounds to deal with the semiconductor crisis. No, I'm, I'm the mad rapper. I'm not the phone police. You the, like the you the phone police and you tell me I'm the mad rapper. You are the mad rapper, y'all. I see. As far as the market is concerned, everybody knows that the super constrained chip inventory has wreaked havoc pretty much all over the world. Most companies had no other option than to temporarily suspend production or sell their vehicles without non-critical systems, all in an attempt to reduce the number of chips used on the models they were building. So this is why I say, uh, like right here, some car makers, however, including Volkswagen and BMW, don't expect full recovery for pre-2020 levels anytime soon. 
with some anticipating the struggle will continue through 2024. And this is why you, the G wagon, um, suspended. Why are you laughing? How are you gonna? I'm just waiting to see how you tie this together. Oh, the G wagon. Uh, it, oh, it's and it sold out until 2024. But they had suspended the G wagon production, um, because one because of the chips. That was one because of the chips, right? And so now you have this G wagon out here. It's sold out until 2024. People are ordering. Like right now, if you go try to get a G wagon, they 250, 300, and depending on the brand that you're getting, they're, they're up a little higher. Uh huh. Um, it says the G wagon is near its end of life. Far from it. In fact, an all electric EG, EQG derivative is expected to arrive in 2025. It retains a signature boxy upright stance that will make it such a style icon. So it's going electric. So this is what the electric looks like. See how that rides. Here's what the electric looks like. Oh, that's cute. I like it. So when I went to get gas yesterday, do you know it was almost five dollars a gallon? Mm-hmm. So it should have been around, well, I think that tank is a 23-gallon tank. So it should have been around about $100. No, it was 60 Oh, okay. But I was like, then in the back of my head, I was like, we don't worry about gas. Gas ain't a problem. Right. That's what I pumped myself up to say. <laughs> but Todd, you're right. Appliances as a service, right? What does that mean for people who have laundromats? And a chip goes out and they're, they're supplying a need to the community. How does that work? Um, how would it, how, how does it work? Uh, we, I mean, we can get away with the dryer. I mean, we can get away with the washing machine if we really wanted to be honest with it, right? You go back to old school washboard. I saw somebody talk about that uh, doing the washboard, right? Maybe you pick certain things that you wash, right? Um, I don't know. Um, just, um, I'm just thinking, uh, you know, ahead of the game in terms of how, how do you, if we're, if we're taking chips out of our washing machines, eventually probably dryers too, right? What does that look like? Um, do we start taking chips out of, uh, uh, of the, the, the Roomba, the Roomba, is that what it is? The Roomba? Do we take chips out of that? Do we take chips out of the the little vacuum cleaners that you know go around by themselves? Do we take I don't those? No, I'm not taking it. Nothing out the washing machine and dryer. That is a luxury I am not giving up. So if they can't tell me how to wash these clothes without the chip, or it's solar powered, or it's whatever is powering it, it's little rodents in there running on the little thing to make the drum go around. I don't want to know about. It. So again, D, you got to think about it. You got to get domesticated. <laughs> what does that mean? I mean, what do you mean domesticated. I'm. I am. Let me tell you what I'm not doing. Flunk I am in. not washing nothing on a washboard, and I'm an <laughs> avid hand washer. I will go and rinse some stuff out really quickly. However, you on that BS. I can't do it. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, everybody that I know can take care of themselves. So if that is domesticated, then it, it is what it is. Like if you can't make yourself a sandwich and wash your clothes and take yourself where you need to go, that's another problem. Don't come over here with your BS, Tamika. All right. The FBI is, <laughs> the FBI the U.S. Treasury and the CISA are warning warn of North Korea hackers are targeting blockchain companies. So how many of y'all got y'all wallets out there? Uh, um, I was getting ready to say something else. How many of y'all got y'all wallets out there online? Or do you have a cold wallet, right? It says the U.S. Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Agency, which stands for CISA, CISA along with the Federal Bureau of Investigations, FBI, 
Uh, and the Treasury Department warned of a new set of ongoing cyber attacks carried by the Lazarus groups targeting blockchain companies. How many of y'all have heard about these uh, uh, these 600 million, 300 million been ciphered off off of these uh, blockchains, right? Calling the activity cluster traitor, traitor, traitor. Uh, the infiltrations involve the North Korean state-sponsored Advanced Persistent Threat APT actor striking entities operating in the Web3 industry since at, at least since 2020. This, excuse me, this goes back to my point that I was making earlier when we we're talking about cybersecurity, right? It's just going to be as we continue to evolve, we're going to always need cybersecurity. Um, and we are going to need someone that is the fun police. We are. When we start talking about things like what's going on in the in a, in a metasphere, right? Where the young lady said she was raped in the metasphere. I should I can't use that word. She was R in the metasphere. Uh, when we start talking about that, what does that look like? How do we have systems and processes in place? How do we determine what is it real and what is not? Like what is? How do we do that, right? Um, how do we take care of? of the children that are being in, in, in these areas, how do we protect them? What procedures and processes are we gonna have in, as far as protections around them, right? So um, that's just something to think about, right? Um, targeted organizations include crypto exchange and current uh, exchanges, centralized finance, DeFi protocols, play to earn uh, cryptocurrency video games. This is something that I've talked about. Uh, that I wanted to build out with women in Linux. I wanted to build out a Linux play to learn situation where you are learning and earning at the same time. I talked about this on a show. We talked. About, I talked about this when I was in Miami as well too. How do we, you know, go about building that? So those that do want to learn, those that do want to get your cert, you can get paid while you while you're doing this this earning or this learning. I I should say. Cryptocurrency trading companies, venture capital funds, investing in crypto, and individual holders of large amounts of crypto or value or valuable NFTs, right? The attack chains commits with the threat actor reaching out to the victims via different communication platforms to learn them, to lure them to downloading their weaponized cryptocurrency apps for Windows and Macs, subsequently leveraging the access to propagate the malware across the network and conduct following uh, follow on activities to steal private keys and initiate rogue blockchain trans transactions. Right. And here's some code. You can't really see it, but let's see if you can read this code. This looks like this is written in. in you to make it bigger. I, I did. I, I expanded it some. I hope that's okay, big that's enough. Better. All right, so here we go to lowercase. All right, they chase up to lowercase, grab something and do to a two lowercase and we're gonna say we say e equals to slash slash. Okay, we got some win third two. We got a variable equal to e here. All right, we got an async function. We got this i equal to a website plus they're joining and they're saving this. It looks like a dot json file here, right? And T plus E. So at this point, E is this and T is that. They got a temp dir there. Okay, we're in the temporary directory. We're doing a math random dot two string on that. Substring. Okay, okay. All right. All right, here we go. And this is all they got right here. There's more code down here. You can see that, but here we go. If X and on return. Okay, okay. We did. We got a request. Okay, unauthorized. Okay. Get the status code. It could be or T or I or 200 does not equal to I dot status code. And then do hit a return. Okay, okay, okay. All right, we got to create right stream here. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Are y'all reading this? Y'all should be able to read this. Uh, those pi Where my Python gurus at? Y'all should be able to read this. We got to try and catch it. We're trying something. We got to catch it. Where y'all at? Hmm? I read that. I can read that. That makes sense to me. All right. It says this far from the time group, 
This is far from the time, uh, for the first time, the group has deployed a custom malware to steal cryptocurrencies. Other campaigns mounted by the Lazarus group consist of Operation Apple, I guess, Apple, I wouldn't say Apple Jesus, but <laughs> I guess I could say Apple Jesus, uh, Snatch uh, Crypto, and more recently making use of the Trojan DeFi wallet apps to backdoor Windows machines. And here we go. The malicious apps are, are, are listed below. And here's the malicious apps here. All right. And let's see. The disclosure come less than a week after the Treasury Department attributed the cryptocurrency theft of Axie Infinity Ronin Network to the Lazarus Group, sanctioning the wallet address used to receive the stolen funds. And they got a little bit more of that. But here's the list of malicious apps. So in case you were wondering what those were. All right. Let's see what we got next here. Oh, my one of my one of my favorite topics. We gonna we ran them today. I got my notes though. We ran them today, but I got my notes though. That's not. Oh, right. Is it gone? No. Oh, I know what it is. This number is in the way. That's what it is, okay. Black home ownership, right? This came out February the 1st of 2022. I think I reported this before. Um, so here we go. Black home ownership down 3% since 2000 um, as the racial wealth gap widens, right? Um, and this came out in 20, in February of this year. Uh, CNBC's Frank Collin reports on the growth in the black spending power and the decline in the in, in other wealth metrics. Right? Oh, they took it down. Oh, that sucks. Let me see. Yeah, they took it down. I was just looking at that, but that's okay. That's how you do that. All right, here it is from the 22nd. Watch now. Loading an ad. Thank you for the ad. All right, I'm going to turn it up now. It reached a record $1.6 trillion in 2021. The ability to buy, save, and invest more than doubling since 2000. That growth actually exceeded the full U.S. economy, but lagged other ethnic groups. Latinos with a 288% increase, Asians with a more than 380% rise in their spending power. However, other groups have also seen an increase in their net worth. Black Americans instead have seen their wealth actually fall by 14%. With the S&P rising more than 25% last year and college grads earning about 60% more than non-grads typically, many black business leaders say, say the community really needs to rethink how it spends. We've got a massively over-index in education. That's the more education you have, the better you do. Whether you, and whether you're cashing a check or writing one, meaning working for someone else or working for yourself, the more education you have puts you, makes you better off. I would love to see us spend more money in the stock market instead of uh, buying the hottest new thing, buy the stock of the hottest new thing. And that's something that is something that you can also pass down generation to generation. Black home ownership has actually fallen more than 3% since 2000. Annually, black families accumulate 300 billion less in wealth than white families, and they save 75 billion less. The racial wealth gap is only wide now. It stands at more than 11 trillion. Carl, over to you. So when I have these conversations about, oh, we need to make the 200,000, I'm not having it for my health, right? I'm having it for the, for the wealth of my family, your family, uh, and so forth and so on, right? Um, there, 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 there are things that we have to talk about. So that's why we have tech stocks and jobs. That's why we have... Uh, talking about uh, wealth accumulation and what it is. So 
the four phases of wealth and why and and how do you get there and what do you need to be doing and, and where can you be what can you be doing with your money where can your money grow tax free tax deferred uh what is an ira what is a roth ira what is a full roth 401k what is a full 1k uh, annuities uh whole life insurance permanent term right we i can go on and on and on but these are the conversations that we should be normalizing having we should be normalizing having these things we should normalize having the the the, the conversation about why uh, why or how you can buy your 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 car in your business name what are business write-offs what are scps uh self-employed iras uh, backdoor Roth IRA, I mean, backdoor IRAs, what does that look like? Um, do we should be able to have these conversations. This should be a normal conversation for us. It shouldn't be that we can't have these conversations. We should be able to talk about and be comfortable talking about, oh, my trajectory for this year is I'm I'm shooting for 200000 in, in in my income. I'm shooting for 400000 in my income. I'm shooting for this. We should not be making it normal that it's okay. And 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 I have a problem with this. I, I watched a lot of little stuff this week that kind of pissed me off. Um, it, we should not be okay with saying, telling people that you're never gonna make a hundred thousand, you're never gonna make a million dollars, and you should be okay with what you have in order to survive. Because really and truly, what you're to me. What I'm hearing people say is it's okay to live a life of struggle and never not know what it's not like to struggle. That's what I hear. I don't know what you hear. That's what I hear. And I'm saying that it's not okay for us to continue down that path. That doesn't make sense to me when we have the opportunities not to, right? So again, it's just one, one of those things that I wish that we could be, we could have that conversation and and, and be better at, at that conversation. Um, but again, that's my lecture, that's my thoughts. Um, if people don't agree with it, more than welcome to come up on stage. Um, D, D will drop that link in a minute and we can debate about it or whatnot, All right? All right, so let's talk about these things. Snowflake. All right. Snowflake is hiring over 800 roles worldwide. Many of those roles are paying $100,000, over $100,000. All right. Many of those roles are paying over $100,000. All right. Here are the certifications and skills needed to get hired. What do you say now? Once again, 100,000 wasn't that much 10 years ago. Isn't, it wasn't that much 10 years ago. It wasn't. All right, so here we go. Snowflake is hiring hundreds of experts from uh, uh, experts across multiple teams. The roles can pay upward of $200,000 depending on the experience level. Java and SQL are among the top skills requested across uh, hundreds of open positions. All right. Let me blow this up so you can see. And I'll blow up the wrong screen. Let me blow that back down. All right. All right. Snowflake has quickly emerged as the powerhouse for tool, tool companies uh, can use to manage their and ever growing. Uh, stores of data. I talked about Snowflake last year. I talked about Snowflake and data, Databricks last year. I talked about these roles last year. Here we are again. We back again. We back. <laughs> we back to talk about these roles again and what they're paying and what they're, and what they're looking for. All right. To remain near the front of the pack, it needs to hire the best talent, especially as it tries to catch up with rivals like Databricks. And I showed you last year uh, with Databricks, um, um, uh, uh, certification, their certification track. 
And here's their learning role based learning paths. Let me blow this up. All right, so you can see they have data engineering, machine learning, um, data science, and data analysts. And then you see here, business leader probably is going to take data lake house fundamentals accreditation. You have the data analyst, you have the data engineer, machine learning engineer, platform engineer, or platform admin, and then uh, Apache Spark. So this one here, you can just do the lake house. And then they are un they're developing uh, the actual platform admin out. So you may not be going in every day as a data scientist. You may just manage the platform some for someone, right? But they all start with this fundamentals here, and then they move over into a data analyst associate certification, a data engineer associate, and then a professional, and then a machine learning associate, and then a machine learning professional, right? And so they have those. So let's go here, data engineer. All right, welcome to data. Welcome, data engineers. Here are the courses we recommend for your roles: Apache Spark programming with with DataBricks for two days, data engineering with with DataBricks, optimizing Apache Spark, advanced data engineering, and so forth. Right. So they have that. Let's see what happens when you uh, do enroll. I'm just curious as the cost. Uh, oh, that sucks. I don't want to sign up. I just want to cost. So let me here. Let me go to learning subscription. Meet all your needs, and they have a learning subscription. So silver, gold, and platinum. You got to contact them for the cost. So it is what it is. I tried, right? <laughs> I tried. I tried to tell you how much it costs. You're gonna have to contact them. To find out what it is on, on the cost, um, it looks like it's probably priced for companies itself. So some of, some of your companies out there may already have a DataBricks um, a DataBricks uh, partnership where you could probably get some of that for free. You could probably go on Udemy and look up data engineering, Coursera, edX, um, Pluralsight, so forth and so on. You could probably go look that up. You could look up data engineering. On multiple platforms from AWS GCP, um, AWS GCP Azure, they probably have data engineering. What that looks like there, but we're gonna get more into some other stuff this 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 week um, today on what I found. Right. So let's get back to what we were talking about. Right. So that's DataBricks. They said to determine the talent um, looks like inside a review, hundreds of jobs currently posted for Snowflake's various teams including engineering, sales, marketing, finance, IT, and customer support. Most of these jobs pay over 100000 and many director-level salaries hover around 250000 The technical uh, um, openings span traditional engineering roles to solution architects, common fixer jobs in the cloud computing that get customers up and running on Snowflake. These jobs require a long list of skills, including Glow, Glow, Go programming and Spark Analytics software, many of which are covered in the certification courses. Per state law, job postings that may attract candidates in Colorado, including remote opportunities, are required to provide compensation bans. So if you ever want to know what a job is offering and you're not sure, go look at the compensation ban in Colorado because they got a release. At least it gives you the mindset or at least where they can start and what that can look like, right? And it may change upon the city. We don't know, but at least you get an idea, right? All right, here's a here's a look at Snowflake, the Snowflake, um, the jobs that Snowflake are hiring for and the skills. Snowflake me engineers who know Java. Do can you go get a Java certification? Absolutely, but I don't know no too many people that got it. All right. Director level 176 to 250, senior level 132 to 176. Most roles, men, most openings mention Java. After Java, the next most in demand is Python to C++, with roughly 40% of the jobs looking for familiarity with both, right? In addition, engineers are expected to have familiarity with AWS, Microsoft, Azure, and GCP. Pick a cloud, any cloud is what I always tell you, right? 40% of the job postings require uh, AWS and Azure, and about 30% require GCP. 
Beyond those key skills, um, there are a wide range of specializations Snowflake needs to build its products. Through Though they appear to be small number of postings, but they do need things like <coughs> Terraform, <coughs> Foundation DB, Cassandra, <coughs> Ansible, <coughs> uh, Spark, Git, Hadoop, React, JavaScript, and Golang, right? <laughs> all right, around half of all of these job postings are looking for computer science graduates. 32% of the job postings request PhD level, while 12% are looking for master's degrees. Oh, although there's overlap, several job postings ask for master's or a PhD, all right? Java is Snowflake's bread and butter for its platform. So the best place to start getting to get start getting a Java certification like the one Oracle offers. Uh oh, to me, you didn't you didn't talked up some shit now. You didn't talked about it now. Didn't you mention this earlier? Yeah, I did. All right. So, oh, look at here. You can go learn this. How to use Java through online courses like Udemy. I swear I have not read this this article at all i'm reading it out loud now but i talked about this already i'm just showing you there's a common common theme that goes on right you probably want to take a strong or tack i think it's supposed to be take on a strong understanding of algorithm stru structures i don't have my algorithms book i spoke about the algorithms before but whatever Here's the popular one that you can use, Harvard's popular CS550X online, though you may want to explore more advanced topics, all right? I think this sounds redundant. I personally think it sounds redundant because I've said this before. To get familiar with cloud platforms, a good starting place is to obtain, obtain the solution architect. Remember when I talked about earlier, when I say pick a cloud, any cloud, just don't go get, hey, this is the intro to what cloud is. They actually want you to know a little something. So your solutions architect, your sysops, certain certain number of those, a little bit more advanced ones should get you in the door, right? Um, AWS associate level solutions architect, Microsoft Azure solutions architect will give you a general overview, a concept behind those tools. Snowflake professional service staff need to be a jack of all trades. Don't get vendor lock in. Hmm. 111 to 800, 111,000, let's say 112,000 to 149,000 and 127,000 to 203,000. Snowflake professional service teams is responsible for making sure Snowflake's customers can get a product working in the first place. Go play with the snowflake. <laughs> Don't play with my yo yo, right? Look at D in the background. Hey D. Hi D. Fun police. <laughs> More than eighty percent of the uh, job postings indicated a need for familiarity with business intelligence. Business intelligence, like Looker or Tableau, helps companies automatically parse and interpret their data. Data data and are a cornerstone of company decision making uh if you were on on the show this week with um erica williams that was uh i forget his name now the one guy that was on there that was talking about uh how he helps with marketing uh companies make their well marketing in different companies to make their decisions and so forth and so on right um yeah the red algorithm book that's correct um, in addition, solution architects and other professional services need to be equipped with a wide variety of skills to tackle any problems customer might have. Each of these skills was mentioned in roughly about half the jobs. Infrastructure experience, Hadoop, HBase, MapReduce, GreenFund, Cloud, Oracle X Data, AWS, Kinesis, Programming Languages, SQL, Java, C, C, C++, C++ Ruby, Perl, and Bash. Snowflake has its own certificate, so start there, but there are other certifications will cover almost most of the bases. AWS Cloud Solutions Architect, Google Cloud Professional Architect, and Azure uh, Solutions Architect. Customer support skills are expected to have 
to have technical skills. Listen to that. Customer support specialists, sorry, are expected to have technical skills. You see that? All right, now, technical support manager, 112 to 149. Senior su support account manager, 105 to 140. Senior support, uh, senior cloud support engineer, 120 to 159. Technical uh, director or director of technical support, 173 to 245. Snowflake currently has 50 customer support openings ranging from support engineers to account managers. Cloud support engineers debug technical te technical issues with the customer with a customer's product, which can include uh, fixing SQL queries, some listings into request additional language like .NET Python are nice to have. Account managers are expected to have more general knowledge of data warehousing products, a AWS or you could say the top three. Uh, each of the cloud each of those cloud certifications. Um, offers a certification that doesn't dig too far into the weeds, uh, such as AWS Cloud Practitioner course. Sales experts need to have deep understanding of data warehouse and how they work. 126 to 157 for account executives, though the company says it's coming to receive 252,000 to 315,000 with the participation of commission plans. Right, so here's the sales, right? Here's that sales, right? Knowing the basics, understanding things, but knowing how to talk to that customer, knowing how to get and extract what that customer needs and then sell that product, right? Right? Um, sales engineer, 138 to 183, but up to 184,000 to 245,000 with the commission plan. Snowflake currently has 300 sales openings, ranging from sales development representatives to account executives. Sales listings is, is seek a deep understanding of the product. Product knowledge is key, so take the classes, right? Such as ETL pipelines, a tool for cleaning up data prior to storing it in a warehouse. Coursera has a course on called the Big Data Integration and Processing that covers this. Hold on one second. Let me see who wrote this. I like that style. Brandon McGrid, McDermott, McDermott, McDermott. Let's see who he is. I like his style. I like his style. He's a journalist. I like his. I like his information. He giving y'all step by step and where to find information and then put it to practical use, right? All right. All right, we got the infrastructure, we got that customer support, we did that sales, deep understanding. All right, Snowflake marketing employees need to understand experimentation and other digital strategies. 154 to 168 for a director of marketing manager 123. That's kind of absolute right there. That's like ain't no wiggle room. Uh, growth marketing manager, 110 to 119. Uh, there are a dozen of roles open for that. And they tell you to go you to me for ad, and then edX Coursera. Uh, analysts and buyers uh, on this finance team, 101 to 130 and then 183 to 260. Right, and they're going more to that Salesforce developers. Somebody asked about Salesforce before 130 to 174, 165 for the pen tester, for 165 to 220. Snowflake is hiring dozens of roles in IT, it can range from data engineering to security and Salesforce deployment. Right, IBM offers solution architect certificate that covers data warehouse, and I believe that's free. All right, so again, money is out there. You just gotta go get it. Yeah, that article is behind a paywall. All right, I'm reading through the chat. Oh, hold on. I had to post this article. Uh oh. 
All right, we can post that article. All right, next up. I found this interesting. And I'll tell you why in a minute. Um, here we go. Yeah, this one. The gas station from 1940. And this is a staple of Texas, Bucky's. It's not only a ginormous gas station, but also holds titles for the world's largest convenience store and longest car wash. Clearly, there have been many changes throughout the century. But when exactly did gas stations go from this to mega fancy grocery stores? So for that answer, we need to dive in to the surprising world of gas station economics, which as we know, is a hot topic right now. This is the story of just one way gas stations have to evolve to survive a turbulent business model. Early gas stations were centered around the automobile, a one-stop service shop. The service distinction used to be at the canopy, checking your oil, checking your radiator, checking your fluid. But the emergence of self-service stations put the idea to rest. The full-service shop proved unnecessary in the end. So gas stations really needed to find other ways to bring in revenue. That's because by the time it reaches the gas station, that good old black gold Texas tea maker of many millionaires, well, it's not so profitable for the stations themselves. Like at all. So as promised, get gassed up for an exciting trip into the world of gas station economics. Gas station owners make a very small percentage off of gas sales. This is where your money actually goes when you fill up. All right, now I'm gonna give you my caveat on this. Um, why I found this interesting is 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 um this. Um, when we start looking at food deserts, and we start looking at what um what's going on in your community, um, you see the Seven Elevens are changing, right? And, and you also see that the Wawa's out there are, are, are looking like grocery stores. So remember you used to go to the corner store and get, you know, your Tide and some uh, Jolly Ranchers and uh, your mama say bring her back a, a BC, <laughs> right? You, you used to go to the corner, the corner store and get these things, but now... Is that is is that the is that the is that the point of where we're starting to see food deserts? But I see gas stations replacing the food desert, as ironic as it sounds. Especially when we don't have people going into there to put up those grocery stores. So what if the model changes where we don't have the grocery stores? We can't get the grocery stores in those areas, but we can get a gas station in those areas. And then if you are the owner, maybe you could put in fresh produce. You can drive what vendors go into that, right? Not to say that Bucky's don't have their own set of vendors, but just thinking out loud, right? So what does that look like for, for the food deserts, right? So just think out, think about it from a different perspective of what, uh, what, what we're able to do and what we're able to provide, right? Yep, many stopping shops. Like, just, I mean, fruit deserts aren't going anywhere. And the further and further people move out, the further and further away they're going to get from having the ability to have those gas stations and stuff. Yeah, urban farming is, is a thing. But again, um, I don't know too many people in, in, in the food deserts that are going to go do farming. I don't know those people. I know people that would literally walk by lots and let grass grow up to your eyeball. Excuse me. So I don't know about the urban farming. I don't see that happening. I do see a gas station going in there and providing. Um, we even have some gas stations in Tampa that, that act as a gas station and people come there and they sit down and they have their lunch. And then, so they're cooking breakfast, lunch, and dinner in those gas stations. Um, so they don't just, they're just start providing the gas. In fact, we talked to D, you remember that conversation when we talked to the guy that, um, provided the, uh, that was the, it was the one, just the gas station. They provided, 
their family have been in there in that area for years and they provide breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Mm -hmm. And and he was like, he saw a need where there was nowhere for people to come and get something to eat. They didn't have nothing to eat. The kids didn't have nothing to eat when they yeah, went. He said the restaurant was the biggest revenue. So they expanded on that restaurant co concept in the back. And that's a lot of places, gas stations in the area. And I, me and Tam were, I, I had her laughing because I was like, I bet you this gas station that I go into, they're going to sell a white tea. They're going to have a cell phone store. You can cash your paycheck. You can get a payday loan. Like, and that just goes to show you the void in some areas. Yep. And so as we start, start talking about what gas stations look like, remember I showed you the model in which the whole going green and you will pull up to the pump to fill up your electric car and the gas was on the side well what about the food deserts and where do these get what these gas stations look like i see a lot of little kids riding bikes to the gas station to go get a sandwich or to go get uh some chips or go get a sandwich chips and something something to eat uh, they made some money off of having their little water bottle stand. And now they're going over here to get something to eat, right? So we got, again, um, what our neighborhoods and environments look like also changed too. Just want to point that out, right? Uh, what you say? I got a few gas stations where I'm doing the same thing, restaurant and gas it's literally like a travel center. It is. It's like you go in. I, I, I need me some flip flops. I need a charger for my phone. I need to get me something to eat. I need me some chips. Uh, and if you on, if you get on the road, of course. What's the? What's it? What is it? It's not BJ's. What is it? Um, D. What is it? Pilot. We, huh? Pilot. pilot. Yeah, pilot. Yeah. So again, um, gas stations. Or I don't even want to call them into turn into little truck stops. They're turning to flown bone your your next scale down grocery stores, right? And so that's what they're talking about in this particular one. Let's get back to it for a minute. Say the gas at your local station costs three dollars eighteen cents a gallon. The crude oil itself costs a lot, a dollar sixty three, or over half the final price you pay at the pump. Then there's refining, another fifty five cents or seventeen percent. Taxes take another 17%, then transportation to where gas stations can actually sell it is another 8%. Finally, gas station owners tack on a small markup, say 7%, and boom, that's the price you'll see advertised when you're driving around looking for a deal. So basically, if you sell 4,000 gallons per day with a markup of 5 cents, you're only bringing home about $200. So you may be thinking, well, can't they just raise their prices? Not so fast. Drivers aren't loyal to any one gas station. They will drive around to find the best deal, which is easy to do because gas stations tend to clump in similar areas. This is the same reason why soaring oil prices actually hurt gas station owners, like right now. See, now they have to buy the gas at a more expensive price, but raising their own prices could just drive off more customers. And for all you drivers out there, I'm sure you're trying to find the best deal. These low profits forced gas station owners to get creative, but it took a convenience store owner to help them see how. This is John Roscoe, who, in 1964, had a pretty radical idea for the times, adding self-surface gas to his convenience store. I know it sounds totally normal now, but trust me, back then, this was a revelation, and for somewhat good reason. That's because self-fueling originally was prohibited due to potential fire hazard concerns. All right, let me pause right there. Now, how many of y'all been to a 7-Eleven? <laughs> that used to be my staple as a kid. And Colin, Colin, Colin Evelyn said that KFC has started gas stations that's that that sold chicken on the side, right? Oh, really? Do KFC still sell chicken? I heard that's why they they don't really sell chicken. That's why it's not Kentucky Fried Chicken anymore. <laughs> Yeah, how to how to get the customer in and keep them coming back, right? Um, but again, drop a one in the chat if you uh, like one you hear, uh, and also um, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's get back to it.
But in his 2,400 square foot building, Roscoe decided to give it a try. Now, instead of popping into the convenience store to grab kitchen staples like milk, soda, and bread, customers could tick up filling up the gas tank off their to-do list as well. It took a few years for Americans to embrace the idea. Getting gas for the same place that you get your milk and eggs? Preposterous. In fact, it took Wawa, which today is one of the largest sellers of fuel in the country, two attempts to incorporate selling gas at their convenience stores. But soon, as any contemporary road trip fan knows, the idea took hold. Just a bit wow. The American public quickly came to expect the two together, but it took the convenience stores that added gas stations a little while to find their stride selling non-gas items. In the 70s and 80s, gas stations mostly sold just the bare bones basics, you know, like cigarettes and soda, otherwise referred to as smokes and cokes. But that was just the tip of the iceberg. I knew I had to fill it up, so I pulled into BP. Gas station owners now made the obvious observation that drivers needed to fill up their other tank, their stomachs. I came in here just to fill my tank and fill myself instead. I just want to stop here and say, I've never seen none of these commercials in my life. <laughs> I didn't even know why I had a commercial. I didn't even, I ain't never known BP to have a commercial. <laughs> I ain't never known none of that. Ty, uh, you said if, if Cracker Barrel started selling gas, that's a wrap. <laughs> what? Get you some pancakes and a fill up. But you know, Tam, one of the, the gas station concept that you often mention, when I was by the Orlando airport, there was one that had that concept. It was the gas station convenience store in one area. Then it had a hallway and it had the restrooms in that area. And then another area looked like a, I guess, what do you call like the the um, the food hall where it had like the different uh, places you can buy not really fast food but nice great fresh food and all the vendors weren't in yet and then they had the outdoor seating some seating on the side of course the electric pumps so while people were waiting at the airport for their people they weren't at the cell phone wait center they were actually at this gas station just chilling out having a good time Oh, that remind, remind me of the late night gas station in Atlanta when we go get the sandwiches. On North <laughs> Avenue. Uh, uh-huh. Oh my God. They had the is it was all bone pan and yep. they had the best chicken chili ever. Oh, it was all delicious. Get <laughs> me started on the late night with being there. Like, give me a turkey sandwich. Oh with my well, my ex and it, the sandwich come out like that. that place. I mean, yeah, my ex husband stayed up the street, so I stayed there. He was like, "You want to go get some chicken chili?" And I was like, "Yes, most definitely." <laughs> oh, was, all that! Oh, it was so delicious! Gas, and I don't eat gas station food, but that food was bumping. Yeah, yo, that was my favorite. That was my favorite. I miss, I miss that sandwich. All right, let's get back to it. And oh, uh, thank you, Shari. Uh, he said, "What and what and where is Wawa? We don't have anything named that." Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, they took over Florida. I remember I was working for a commercial real estate broker and he was helping to scout locations for Wawa here. And they just came and they just wiped out. And Wawa, is, I mean, their sandwiches alone like they're, are, are better than Subway. Like they sell smoothies, sandwiches. You can get your coffee. Like the line is out, out the door just for the food alone. And you can Wawa. add protein powder to your smoothie as well, too. It ain't just like a fruit smoothie. You can add protein powder to it as well, too. So let's get back to it. Free air. Free air. Gas stations <laughs> tended to focus on service on the outside of the store before kind of realizing over the decades, hey, uh, you know, people are making a stop here. Maybe they're hungry, want something to drink as well. The focus was so small that a lot of that food experience was not great. I remember uh, early in the 80s, coining the term EQ burger, burgers that would sit ready all day long for somebody to pick them up. So quality of food aside, anyone whose earliest memories of road trips are in, say, the 1980s or 90s, might never have known that convenience stores and gas stations used to be two separate things. But the youngest generation? Well, I'm willing to bet they'll have a different conception of gas stations altogether. Because in the last 20 years or so, 
things have changed. In Michigan, Epicurean cheeses, raw juice and smoothie bars, a pizzeria, and 1,500 bottles of wine. In Florida, pulled brisket sandwiches, fresh pastries, omelets, and handcrafted mac and cheese. And in Kentucky, farm-to-table avocado toast, black-eyed pea hummus, and iced coffee. All of these places are gas stations. Obviously, many drivers want to save a few cents at the pump, but some people are even choosing gas stations because it's home to their favorite sandwich. Oftentimes, you'll get somebody that'll go for food once a week. So you're really able to build some sales there. The other key thing when you have food, particularly if you have unique food, there is no competition. Let's break down the modern gas station economics. Gas stations today make most of their money from inside the store. 44% of gas station customers go inside, and among them, a third purchases treats. And with certain items having gross profit margins of 50% or more, they often make up 70% of the station's profits. A lot of this is thanks to younger Americans, who are more loyal to convenience stores. These younger Americans tend to purchase food there more often than their older counterparts. So y'all young folks eating at the gas station? <laughs> So are we debunking the myth that 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 you that you need to cook? Are we debunking that? I mean, sure. We are, as kids, we go to Seven Eleven. We go get our uh, some nachos. You go. You can put your sauce on there. Your meat sauce. You can go hook it up and go about your merry business. Like, of course. And it's, if it's convenient, you can walk to it. Absolutely. But the way these gas stations are set up. I mean, they kicking 7-Eleven in the butt. Like, nobody wants them little hot dogs that's on that little thing <laughs> and just spinning and been out there all day. Don't nobody want that. And, and what's crazy is the gas stations down in Florida, they have the guys selling barbecue outside. And they don't even turn on the car wash anymore because the guys have taken over to wash the car by hand. So you go to get your gas, get you some barbecue, and get your car hand washed all at the same time, all right? So you can get jerk chicken, you can get barbecue, you can you, you can get tacos. Some of them have have uh, little uh, buses and stuff like that. So the idea of what a gas station is or the corner store is is different, right? And you and the ones that sell food and stuff like that, you don't see uh, people hanging out there. <laughs> they are not. Well, I mean, even the corner store. I mean, when I went in there, they was frying chicken, <laughs> all type of stuff in there. I was like, is that cheesecake? And I had to ask. I was like, is do you, is the black person on this? They was like, no. I was like, mm, he got y'all in here fooling the people. They was in there getting down. I was like, man, I might want a piece of cake. But I was like. No, they're trying to trick me. They're trying to trick me. But I do miss a good, good barbecue on the curb. I haven't, I haven't trusted a good one in a long time. Like I, ugh, you know, street meat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, when we talk about a food desert and we talk about what we can put in place um, to combat that food desert and earn a little profit for ourselves and go into it just think about it just from that perspective if it was already a gas station there if you got to put a gas station there then that's a lot of work but if it's I mean, a this old, mexican restaurant not too far from us they took over a gas station and because and they're across the street from a home depot and it's stay packed stay packed all the time and i wish they were delicious but they're not but <laughs> Stay back. Well, we already know what that is. All right, let's finish up. In fact, in 2019, 43% of Americans age 18 to 29 bought more food from convenience stores than they did three years prior. And in 2018, restaurant-style food service at gas station convenience stores nationwide made up 23% of their total sales. That's up 3% within the last five years. And it's even helping them compete with fast food restaurants even getting into their market share. And as we all know, younger Americans can't really seem to do anything without posting about it. But even with all the hype comes its own set of challenges. More than 80,000 gas stations have closed since 1995. 
And with the COVID-19 pandemic eliminating daily commutes for millions, the rise of natural gas and increase in electric vehicles, the future of gas stations remains in jeopardy. And that's why experts say stations need to diversify. Because those who will succeed are the ones who are thinking outside the box, know their demographics, and can lure people back, either with a range of selections or loyalty programs. And clearly, there's no shortage of creativity. My snack around. So who knows? Maybe the next radical idea is just around the corner. Do you shop at your local gas station? What do you think the future looks like? Drop a comment below and make sure to like and subscribe. Tell me when to start. So I thought that was interesting. I found that, um, you know, what that outlook is, how gas stations are changing. You can see that with your travels and so forth and everything, right? Um, what's in the gas station? You know, clothes, shoes. Um, sure. Yep. Electronics. Uh, accessories, eyewear, fresh food. I know that my drive, I uh, I stopped. I only stopped at Pilot gas stations, and I was just like, now some of them needed a refresh, but some of them were hitting. <laughs> like, mm, All right, so I'm gonna bring this up. Um, I'm not gonna play the whole thing. I'm just gonna bring this up. Hold on, real quick. Let me get it brought See, up. These right local Hold on, let me pull it over. These are this is something I thought was very interesting. How a fat computer geek, this is the title, not me saying it. How a fat computer geek became the Jeff Bezos of the dark web. Right? Um, they talk about um let's see. Uh, I think it's in the opening. Let me let me pull. Let me bring it up. Let's see. Bring it up right here. Go back. More. Respect what I get. <laughs> He's also African. He's from uh, South Africa, I think. Uh, so Ben, you're nodding a little bit, like you know who this is. Is that true? Uh, yeah, I know who Paul Larue is. He's kind of like um, uh, who's the guy we were talking about that you knew? Um, Russell Burr. He's kind of like if if Ross had been as crazy as everyone thought, but actually like 10 times crazier, that's Paul LaRue. Paul, Whoa. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. All right, right, let me, so, man, who's this all guy? Right, so he's based, all right, so Paul LaRue, he's this big old fat, disgusting guy. He's like, <laughs> like, <laughs> imagine. <laughs> Top of the hut? <laughs> yeah, imagine like, have you seen South Park where they're like playing video games and there's that fat guy on the computer who's like eating Cheetos and like, yeah, yeah, yeah. he kind of looks like that. He's just a total slob, but he's this computer whiz. Yeah, Google him. Um, he's like disgusting. And it, that kind of fits the personality of, of, of the whole story. And there's this great book uh, that I'm reading. Uh, it's called Mastermind. It's about him. And basically this guy always like kind of wanted to take over the world. And in around like 2002, 2003, 2004, he started this company called RX Limited, which basically sold Viagra and a couple other like Schedule II drugs. So like no, like um, he was able to sell some opioids, but not like the famous ones, things that are considered Schedule II, which is just one below be between Schedule One. And he created this company called RX Limited. And in like three or four years, it netted him hundreds of millions of dollars in profit. Wow. And do you remember years ago when you would get an email and it said like, hey, we sell prescriptions, click here. Like, do you remember that? Like years and years ago when you're in high school and grade school? Not really, but go on. Let's, let's say, it. let me say yes. Go ahead. Well, basically, and then like maybe you remember like going to like these websites where it like just showed tons of drugs and like you'd get text that says like buy drugs online. Well, basically he created this website, RX Limited, and then eventually he started like creating so many domain names that he created his his own domain registration system. And then eventually his network got so big, he created his own email system because he didn't want anyone to uh, hack into his stuff. And at one point he had like two or 3,000 employees working at this place, mostly Filipinos, mostly working in call centers and he had in Philippines and in Israel because he said that Israeli guys were the hardest working for the cheapest, you know, the cheap, the, the cheap rate. And he, uh, it was, it was wild. And he, and he had basically hundreds of different stores selling drugs. And the way it worked is he would somehow convince a doctor that he was like doing everything by the book. And technically he kind of was doing everything by the book, but it just really quickly warped and did not. 
But basically he had all these doctors in America in like Minnesota, Kentucky, Florida, like these relatively small doctors and like, hey, we're a telemedicine service. Can you fill some of the prescriptions that we're doing? Um, it's all legal and we'll just send you the, uh, the prescriptions that we need and you just sign off and we're going to send it to a pharmacy. So he would send it to a pharmacy and these local mom and pop pharmacies would be like, oh, okay, Dr. X is um, just bought, called in this prescription. I'm going to ship it to the patient. No big deal. And so both the doctors and the patient, uh, doctors and the pharmacists, they all thought that they were mostly following the law. They're like, this is kind of weird that I'm now shipping out. I'm like a mom and pop pharmacist and I'm shipping out like 2,000 orders a week. Like that's weird, but I have no reason. Now, how much money do you think he made? D, what are your thoughts? How much money do you think he made? On the dark web? <laughs> How much money do you if think? they calling him the dark web Bezos, he didn't make almost a billion, if not a billion dollars. On the dark web? In the uh -huh. underbelly of the tech universe? Oh, Big Daddy got banked. <laughs> I'm taking numbers. How much y'all think he made? Let me see. Six billion? Oh, he got money. <laughs> he got money, money. He got him getting new body money. All right. So this is like, uh, this is what I saw on the New York Post here. Because he got 25 years, by the way. Oh, he in a jail? Yeah. That's what's, yeah, that's him. Massive criminal outfit. It's a massive criminal outfit. Uh huh. Yep. Um, How much? Tell us. Hold on. Let me see. I, I had the, I had my article and I deleted it. Jesus. Where's the money? Jesus. Let's see, hold on. I wonder if they. I wonder if this article covers it. It was another for article that I found. I'm gonna have to go back in to my notes. I'm sorry. It it uh, six billion ain't too far off. All right. <laughs> uh, and uh, he just got convicted. Um, but I thought the article was interesting. I also thought the background. There's another. If you go on YouTube, there is. There is uh there is a channel out there that follows the dark world and their peoples and how much money that they make. And they go into a lot of detail about how he made his money and what he invested his money in and who was partnered with him. When we start talking about when who's partnered with him in these other names, I won't name drop, you'll start to follow a a line of uh, information, I'll say, that will be eye-opening. I'll, I'll go more into it next week, but I want to put this out here because I thought this was very interesting uh, when I was looking it up. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, just, uh, you know, hey, you, you on Vice all the time? No, I want no Vice. Um, let me, let me see. Let me pull this up for you. There's another one here. All right. This is on justice.gov. Right. Doctor who conspired with the internet pharmacy organization to uh, unlawfully sell prescription drugs pleads guilty. All right. They said during the time he worked at, I'm going to give you some numbers here. So y'all can really start thinking. Uh, during the time uh, he worked at participating phys participating physician for RX Limited, Ryan approved more than 158,000 illegal drug orders. Ryan pleaded guilty to conspiracy to distribute controlled substances, to introduce misbranded drugs into inter interstate commerce, U.S. Magistrate Judge Douglas E. Miller, sitting in the Eastern District of, of Virginia, a Norfolk division, accepted the plea. Ryan faces a maximum penalty of five years in prison, which uh, in prison when, when sentenced on April the 6th of 2020. All right. 
uh, for more information on that. They don't have they don't have a court case, but you could probably go look up the docket case. You could probably go look that up. All right. So I just wanted to give you some ideas of what we're talking about here when we're talking about <laughs> not these numbers and what was done illegally. Right. I found that interesting this week was I was doing my research. I watched their show often. I don't too much care for the first guy that was, not the first guy, the second guy that was talking. Um, he kind of gets on my nerves. It's kind of, it's kind of biased to me. Uh, I'm not a fan of his, uh, but that, it, nevertheless, I like the information. All right. So let's go here. How much time I got left, D? Five minutes. Five minutes? Uh oh. That means she's hungry. <laughs> Famished. <laughs> I'm scrolling through menus now. Okay. All right. Here we go. All right. In another news, a startup raised $3 million and then it all started falling apart. How 15 minutes and one word prevented a founder's leadership crash, right? All right, here we go. Are you ready to face your own personal leadership crisis? Blow this up some. It's a question that almost impossible to answer until you're faced with it. Do you run from danger or towards it? A lot of people say towards it until the first time they hear the sirens and then the fight evaporates and the flight kicks in. Last week, first time founder and CEO reached out to me and asked for 15 minutes of my time. I rarely do these. I rarely do that these days, as my own projects continue to kick into high gear, including one that exists just to answer my answer as many entrepreneurial leadership questions uh, as possible. Auto continues after video. All right, cool. But all the stars lined up for this request. The startup was legit, having raised three million dollars and closing in on a million, trailing annual revenue. The industry was similar to what I do. And the problem was I had I had faced uh, frequently over my long career as an entrepreneur. The problem in the nutshell was that even with all this success, the founder, the CEO was losing control. Her company was overpromising and under delivering. Deadlines weren't being met. Runaway runway was burning. Investors were frustrated and customers were, were angry. She had been doing so well, but but was now bordering on her very first leadership crisis. So I hopped on a Zoom for the first 15 minutes. The first five minutes, who are you? Every tech startup, every tech startup is unique. Every leader is unique. We all have strengths and weaknesses. The trick is leaning into those strengths and understanding those weaknesses. So we spent the first five minutes figuring out who she is and what her strengths were. Turned out she's a technical founder. And in fact, a technologist by trade. So everybody, just because you're a technical founder, don't mean that you are good at at uh, being a leader. <laughs> that, you know, you gotta you gotta take the good with the bad on that. Her product is a high tech product. Her executive and management team is is entirely constructed of technical talent. There is not there is not an experienced business leader in the bunch. Mm. This is a problem, but not insurmountable one. Her strengths are are her are in guiding her company technical solution with much genius talent on board. Her product has inherent luxury of working uh, accurately every time. Her weakness revolves around the application and the technical solution of the proper one. All right, so that's the first five minutes. The middle five minutes, what's the problem? As might as might be expected, I'll bet in in retrospect and far from and far far away from far away. What, with a clear hair, her startup was has bitten off more than it could chew. Applying, applying, said magically, technology too far, too many desperate um, businesses, uh, business opportunities. A lot of first-time founders charge down the road in knowing the product market fit and jumping straight into promoting their solution as being every solution for every problem for every customer. The result of her startup as 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 it usually is for mo for almost every startup has ignored the product market fit before her before her was a series of several initial successes across several completely different industries right 
So let's get down here to the last five minutes. Where are the knots? She obviously had never been in a situation before. And we talked about this on the last show. If you say you don't know, then say you don't know, right, before. But she also isn't the first founder to go through it. In fact, I learned if you don't overload your capacity experience often, your startup will probably, your startup probably isn't trying hard enough. But wisdom comes, the perspective to step back, slow down, take control, and start untying the knot one at a time instead of trying to untangle the whole Gordian mess at once, right? So we can learn something from that statement right there, right? That that goes back to that big picture, right? And it goes back to you being, uh, being the solution when you come in, right? And again, I always say, and I don't know if you all agree with this, if you're a good leader, you also are a good follower as well too, because a good leader knows when to fall back and let somebody else lead and also knows when also knows when to step up to guide when someone has reached their end point of what their leadership skills are. I think it's very good. It's a, I think it's a very good idea for you to understand how to listen, what to listen to and how to lead people. But it's also good for you to also be a good follower. Right. Um, but take take it taking a step back. Sometimes when you're in your interview process, take a step back. Take a step back to ask yourself what the what the person is actually asking you. Take your time to understand the question, slow down, and then take control, right? Um, a lot of times in interviews, people are not looking for you to follow. They're looking for you to lead. And they want to know if you can do a project by yourself. Can you be left alone or do you need guidance? Um, so these are things that you I want you to have with you and also to take with you as well too, right? All right, so 15 minutes is nowhere near enough to solve a problem of that magnitude. Luckily, it's not my problem to solve, it's hers, and 15 minutes is indeed enough time to prevent a leadership crash. She needed to narrow down everything. She needed to focus. We covered that. Stop trying to solve every problem at once. Vision. Your product and, and tech have a billion-dollar story, but it takes time and milestones to get there. Mission. Focus on the next milestone and put everything else on the back burner or in the dustbin. Market. You missed the product market fit. Excuse me. Make some decisions. Make some quick decisions about which market is your target and restrict your efforts to that market. Labor. If you're running, if you're burning a runway, you need to make hard decisions about repurposing and reducing your talent. Better to make those decisions now before the burn rate makes makes them for you. Feature set. Once you get through all of that, start reviewing the low level functionality and put and put on ice every feature that doesn't provide direct value to your immediate target market. Use cases. Don't do everything halfway. Do do a few things well. Cut your use cases to half and fill those properly on time. Then add other use cases back in. Narrowing your strategy. So this, you can actually use all of this right here for your career. You can use this for how you want your career to look. Focus, vision, mission, market. How you market yourself. The other one is labor. Here it says if you're burning runway. I would say if you're at a company and you're not happy, right, that it becomes... Uh, unenjoyable right so you need to understand what your next move is going to be and feature set once you get through all of that start reviewing the low level functionally functionality and put on ice every feature that doesn't provide direct value to your immediate target if that if it's not providing value for you to be a data engineer a cybersecurity engineer analyst or whatnot filter out the noise right that's filter right and then use cases don't do everything halfway do something very well, right? So I hope that made sense for y'all. Let me check what D got on in the chat right here. Oh, okay. All right, cool. Did that make sense for everybody? I hope it did. Drop a one in the chat if it did. I thought that was good advice. Thought it gave you from a leadership standpoint, take that leadership uh, vision and apply it to your own uh, trajectory and career path. And even, even then... Uh, take another step and say, if you want to be in your own company, how what that looks like, right? That's how I looked at that. 
All right, let's get into the freebies before we get out of here. Um, and then and then I'll let you go. All right. Um, I did want to provide this because I thought this was interesting too. It was posted in Slack. I went through and read it. Um, Biden and sending sending new drones to the Ukraine, right? What drones you sending, Biden? More than 120 Phoenix Ghost Tactical UAVs will be part of the package. Um, this is part of the new $800 million security assistance package that includes other military equipment, right? You didn't hear about that, did you? Do you know what a, a, a Phoenix Ghost Tactical UAV looked like? You have an idea what that looks like? Nah, there it is right here. Come on, you come on through. Spinning. The color kilo drones. That's what it looks like right here. Now what the chips at in those, right? <laughs> E, where's the chips at nose? All right. That's what it looks like. That's what it looks like. All right. Keep your eye on these things. Just trying to tell you. All right. Um. Oh, yeah. This was another one, a goodie right here. This was a goodie. The Pentagon is launching a new website to help innovative companies find opportunities to work with the DOD. Right? Innovative Pathways is the website aimed at making it easier for industry and academia to search for federal for to search for opportunities to collaborate with DOD on technology projects and, and the Pentagon announced this on Friday. Um, the online port portal is here, and they will provide a one-stop shop for outside organizations to access department innovation and so forth, right? So just a little something uh, to think about there. That those that have ideas and don't want to go through DARPA and ARPA and so forth, there is a new way, um, just something to think about that you can that you can do. All right. So we talked about – I did talk about data sciences earlier. Um, here we go. Here also on Fed School, the State Department term, um, is hiring for 50 data scientists using a streamlined process. Uh, the State Department um, um, is in the process of in the process of hiring for 50 data scientists right to streamline the talent acquisition across um, more more of its bureaus. Um, a subject matter expert qualification assessment will be used to certify qualified applicants for work at the participating bureau of their choosing. So again, not looking at whether you got a certification or not, but can you pass this, right? And the jobs are ranging from 106 to 164. You can get more, but that's what their jobs cost. I mean, that's what their jobs are being. All right, so let's get into this. I went on my search to talk about DevOps, right? And what does it mean uh, to get some certifications? So you can go get a professional cloud. You can be a professional cloud DevOps engineer at, at Google. And they also talk about the certification. It's two hours. It's $200. It can be taken online from a remote location or site. The prerequisite is none. It's three years of industry experience plus one year of managing Google Cloud solutions. Um, candidates must certi recertify in order to maintain their certification stat status um, unless explicitly stated in detail. Exam overview. Um, here is the exam guide. So let's go there. Um, let me blow this up some. All right. Uh, balance applying site reliability engineering principles to a service. Um, I won't go into detail. I'm just going to hit set the section highlights. Building and implementing CICD pipelines for service. 
Um, and, and as you can look in here, you see some stuff pop, pop, pop out. Uh, GitLab, Spanaker, Jenkins, um, Terraform, infrastructure code versioning. Um, here, implementing service monitoring strategies. Keep going. Optimizing service performance. Managing service incidents. And that's it. Those are the, that's a lot, but that's what they got as your as your certification right um for professional cloud devops engineer right and then let's go look at the one for aws and also for azure so here's the one that i'm pulling up now for azure all right so here's their track make that a little bigger so our track is understand um, Microsoft Azure fundamentals and then move over to Azure Cloud. Choose from multiple associates. So you can use either one. You can do the administrator and then developer and then the Microsoft certified DevOps engineer expert, right? The AZ400. Let's look at the AZ400. What are you going to get? They got a prereq of two certifications. Google didn't have that prereq right google didn't have that prereq right um complete one prerequisite here then take an exam and then go over here right so uh, measure it says i'll download the outline here let's download that all right access and configure log logging framework design log aggregation and storage uh strategy design a log aggregation and query strategy and interrogate log analytics right so we got design and implement logging design and implement telemetry integrate logging and, and monitoring solutions develop sre strategies uh five to ten percent of it develop an actionable alerting strategy design a failure prediction strategy design and implement health check, develop a security compliance plan, which includes design and authentication and authorization strategy, uh, design system inf sensitive information uh, strategy, develop security and compliance, design governance and enforcement mechanisms, develop a modern source control strategy, plan and implement branching strategies and source code, and you can go always look these up to see what they're actually getting paid as well, too. <laughs> uh, configure repositories, integrate source control with tools, facilitate communication and collaboration, uh, define and implement continuous integration, um, de de define and implement continuous delivery and release management strategy. Uh, and they got a lot for that. Let's go look at AZ400. I think if you're doing an AZ400, you, you've got to be in the mid, too, right? I'm just going to put AZ400. Crazy. Wouldn't do that. That that much work for that. Mm -mm. These numbers are looking dismal. Mm -mm. No. All right, let's filter. Let's go by, okay, we got remote and we got experience. Let's go, I don't wanna do that. Experience, let's go senior. Let's get, they say you're an evangelist. This was posted 24 hours ago. Uh, senior systems, Microsoft. 133 and then senior senior azure architect like i said that's more of an architect role i don't see that being number two but that's just me right as a system engineer i can see that um i think system engineer and architect titles are going to matter because that's going to determine how they pay you on certain things <laughs> all that they should be paying four hundred thousand. Yeah, man, that's a lot for, for the Azure side. Let's go look at the AWS side.
All right. On the AWS side, uh, exam guide. And let's blow that up. All right. Implement and manage continuous delivery systems and methodologies on AWS. Implement, automate. Automate security controls, governance, and process to find deploying, monitoring, metrics, logging, implement systems that are highly scalable, highly available, scalable, and self-healing, design and manage and maintain tools. All right. So what's considered out of scope for the target candidate? Advanced net advanced networking, deep level security recommendation for developers, database query, full stack application, and normalization of data schemes. Um, it is multiple choice, multiple response. Um, your results for the exam are reporting on a scale from 100 to 1,000. You must need a, you need a 750 to pass. And here's the content outline. S SDLC, Software Development Lifecycle Automation. Configuration Management and Infrastructure is Code. Monitoring and Logging. Policies and standard automation, incident and, ev and event response, and high availability, fault tolerance, and disaster recovery. All right. And then they got a breakdown of each one in here. Right. And that's from the AWS side. I think that's a little bit more feasible than the last one. Um, I showed you how to do the cloud engineering stuff earlier with Databricks. Um, here are two from one is from IBM and here is one uh, from Google Cloud Data Engineering Learning Path, Big Data uh, and Machine Learning Fundamentals, Data Engineering on Google Cloud, and then all the way so forth. Um, and they got a course that breaks all that down. I just wanted you to have that information. We talked about data engineering earlier. Um, and when we were talking about Databricks and um, Snowflake, and here is another one that they had recommended inside the course, the IBM Data um, Engineering Professional Certificate. Um, you can take this. It starts on the 23rd, which is today, so you can get enrolled. And they have financial aid available. I don't know if it's like $49 or something like that. You could probably get it on a subscription for Coursera, possibly. And last but not least, um, Oh, I know what it is. Let me pull this up. I know what it is. Let's go over here. All right. Let me go to downloads. And I pulled this up yesterday. Free curriculum. All right. This is from Red Hat. Let me make that a little smaller. And we're going to scroll down here. And let me make this a little wider. All right. So Red Hat Technical, Red Hat 024 is Red Hat Technical uh, Overview. Deploy con containerized tech, uh, deploy applications, technical overview. Um, that's free. Um, so you can understand deploying containers. Uh, Red Hat opens that technical overview, CL010. It's free. Ansible Automation is a two-hour class. That's free. Developing cloud native applications with microservices and architectures, uh, zero th D0092, uh, three hours long. That's free. Uh, virtualization and infrastructure migration and technical overview is four hours long. It's free. Red Hat Satellite 053 is one hour long. Red Hat Agile Integration, Red Hat Angible Automation for Self and Running Containers with Red Hat uh, Technical Overview. All these are free. Feel free to go look them up. Feel free to go find them. Feel free to go play with them and get some understanding for of them and so forth. Um, I also um, found this... Um, Digital, this DevOps digital transfer uh, skills path. This was from, from Red Hat and their training. But I, what I really wanted to highlight on this one is, I wanted to highlight what they include in this. The people, the process, the technology is the DevOps journey, and that is ongoing. 
So when you're talking about DevOps, DevSecOps, whatever, Sec DevOps, whatever, it's people, process, and technology are going to be your things that you're going to look at, right? These, these are things that you're going to look at. So Red Hat De DevOps pipelines and processes using Jenkins and Git and test-driven deployment. I will talk about testing a little bit more next week. Um, we got a lot of stuff to cover, but I really want to get that in for today. I know D's in the background about to die. I'm not even looking at the, the stream for to say it, like hurry up to me because I just look at that, that face. That face is like, if she don't shut up and keep that thing moving so we can get off this stream, I'm going to strangle her. All right. A lot of companies are using a hybrid model, so I have to look at Azure anyway. So I was curious, is it really true that once you learn the cloud, you'll learn? Yeah, the concepts are, the fundamentals are the same. That's really what you start looking at. What job search engines uh, you recommend besides Indeed, LinkedIn, and Glassdoor? There are a ton of them. Um, from Levels FYI to, um, oh, God, I forget the name of it. It's for startups. Oh, God, I forget the name of it right now. It's strictly for startups. It'll come to me. Evelyn, I'll put it in Slack, right? Um, but I, it'll come to me. Um, and I wanted to leave off with this. I sent this to D. Um, I'm going to give you all this. I'm not going to sit through this, but I, I found it to be very good. Baseball stadium in the back. Of um, and you can take a look at this at your leisure. I thought this was actually pretty good. Um, it is not what you think. It is, uh, he angel is, yeah, he gets to it. Um, in this video, it's 20 minutes long, but here you go. I'm no, we're not sitting through this for 20 minutes. We ain't doing that. Okay. Right? We are still more afraid of the usual suspects, even though the usual suspects cannot do one one hundredth the damage of the not so usual suspects, whose actions actually are far more contributory to our current situation and the global situation. So that wealth disparity has got nothing to do with merit, talent, intelligence, hard work or investment strategies. It has to do with the fact that some folks had a head start and that head start doesn't go away just because you pass the Civil Rights Act, Voting Rights Act, Fair Housing Act. In fact, let's understand the real basis of that head start because this is clearly something some people are confused about right now. Particularly these folks who keep yelling and screaming about how they don't want the government intervening in the economy. They don't want the government intervening in healthcare and they don't want the government managing. They just want the market to control everything. They just want small government. See, that's, that's precious to me. <laughs> coming from people who never objected to big government when it was creating white wealth, when it was creating the white middle class, make no mistake, that is what did it. Wasn't hard work and initiative in some vacuum because most people in a competitive society have to work hard or they sink. So that sort of goes without saying. White, black, brown, doesn't matter. People tend to work hard and do so in relatively similar numbers. But what did matter is that the government of the United States stepped in and created wealth for white folks. Big government did that. We need to understand that's where the Head Start comes from. And this thing goes back an awful long ways. It actually goes back to the colonies in the 1630s and 1640s. There was a program in place. My family actually took advantage of it when one of the branches came during that period. You may or may not have heard about it. Odds are not because we don't talk about it in school. But it was this thing called the Head Right Program. The Head Right Program was a program that allowed male heads of household from England who came to the United States to claim 50 acres of land and the tools with which to work it for nothing, just for making the trip. Now, you see, you give out 50 acres of land and some tools to black people, and we call that a handout. We call that welfare. We might even call that reparations. And I'm going to stop it right there. I'm going to let y'all look at that. Because <laughs> he left no crumbs. You want me to drop the link? <laughs> yeah, you can or drop To join link. in the chat. Do you want me to drop the link? Oh, you can drop the link, D. I'm going to drop the link. Oh, you can drop the link. Because you've been back here talking about me. <laughs> But uh, yeah, uh, the if, I don't know if y'all want that the link to that article, um, or to this uh this joint. But uh, yeah, 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 uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It it it, it probably hurt some feelings, and and it's all good if somebody feelings got hurt um that to that all right. Uh, I I I thought it was very interesting. Um. Not from 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 the perspective of like, oh, I didn't know these things. I thought it was interesting of how he broke it down and things that are still ongoing as if it was just yesterday. 
but you can see uh, this was posted back in 2015, but I'm sure that it was not um, done in 2015. That looks like this looked like it might have been 2012 or something like that. So I, I don't know. So you can check, y'all can check that out as well too. I, I found it interesting. D, I'm gonna give me some water. I gotta get up, and get some water. I said you gonna play the video. Oh, you want me to play the video? Yeah, go ahead and play the video. All right. You get on 50 acres of land and some tools. The white folks, we call it nation building. See how that works? It's fascinating, the different kind of rhetoric that we use. Millions of acres of land were given out that way over a period of a very short period of time. Fast forward to the 1860s. Homestead Act of 1862 gets passed. What does it do? Gives out 240 million or more acres of land for virtually nothing to white families. People of color are almost completely barred from being able to take advantage of it. 240 million acres of virtually free land. That, the free market can't do that. Let's just at least agree on that. The, the, the small government can't do that. The market cannot take other people's land and give it to you, right? Only a very large government with guns is capable of doing that. And that's what happened, of course, because this had been somebody else's land before, and then it got taken and redistributed. And yet what's interesting is I haven't seen a single one of the families, because there are 20 million white folks in this country today, some estimate as many as 50 million, but at least 20 million, who are living who are the direct descendants of those people who got Homestead Act benefits, many millions of them living on that land, living on those ranches, living on those farms, living in those houses. Not one of them has showed up in Washington, D.C. and said, you know what, i got to give this back, because uh, seems to me that if I keep this... This property that the government made possible, that'd be like, um, what would that be like? What's the word? That'd be like socialism. <laughs> so here, y'all can take this back because I didn't get it fair and square, you see, but no one does that. Fast forward to the 20th century, not even the early 20th, the middle. So we're talking about the lifetimes of people in this room and for others of you, certainly the lifetimes of your parents and grandparents. Right? From the 1930s until the 1960s, the first 30 years of the Federal Housing Administration Home Loan Program added to that, the VA Home Loan Program added to that in the 1940s. What were these? These were government created programs to subsidize indirectly by way of guaranteeing with taxpayer dollars, private loans from banks. Prior to the creation of the FHA, banks would not lend money to working class people, didn't matter what color you were. They just didn't want to do it because the risk was too great. So even if you were white, didn't matter. If you didn't have enough to pay like half the down payment up front and you could pay it off in 10 years, you weren't getting a mortgage. That was the way it was. The government steps, so there was no middle class. I mean, there just wasn't any. The government steps in, creates the FHA program, later the VA program. What do these do? They basically say, don't worry if the borrowers default, right? It'll be backed up by the full faith and credit of the United States Treasury, which is to say the taxpayers of the United States. So you'll get your money back or at least some portion of it. And that made the banks willing to lend to lower income and working class white families who previously would have had to rent just like black and brown families. They wouldn't have been able to buy. But the problem was the FHA, which now is like a universal. A lot of you, when you get your first home, will probably get an FHA loan. That's what you do. It's low interest. The terms are good. You know, you don't have to have a lot down, that kind of thing. But in the first 30 years of that program, it was almost exclusively for whites. Because the underwriting criteria that the banks were using that was actually given to them by a quasi public institution, right, known as the Home Ownership Lending Corporation, which was created during this period, the underwriting criteria that they used basically made it impossible for people of color to get these loans, even though they were guaranteed with taxpayer money, including the money of black and brown taxpayers. But the way the criteria was written, 98% of all the loans went to white families. By <laughs> What's going on? We got somebody backstage. I don't want to uh, hog all the time right there, but yeah, I, Todd, I saw you, right? Yeah, that is Tim Wise. Uh, what's going on? How you doing? Danetta, how you doing? Can you hear? Uh-oh. You're on mute, by the way. I know. How you doing? I'm awesome. <laughs> Hello, ladies. Hello, hey, all. Hey, how you doing? I'm Okay. I'm just listening. I didn't mean to come backstage. I just wanted to listen. <laughs> I just got up again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. I, I mean, let me replay again. Hold on. 1960, 40% of all white family mortgages were being written under this one preferential policy government policy 120 billion dollars worth of housing equity loan from the early 1940s late 30s until the early 1960s at a time when people of color couldn't get in on that 120 billion dollar head start and again you do that for people of color that's affirmative action that's racial preference that's welfare that's a handout you do it for white folks it's good macroeconomic policy 
right? And of course, it was good macroeconomic policy. It would have been even better had it been extended to people of color because you'd have had an even bigger economic stimulus, but they weren't thinking in those terms. So you have the FHA, the VA program, even black and brown veterans excluded from the loans that were available under the VA program. You have the GI Bill, which in theory was available to all returning veterans after World War II in Korea, but in practice, the disproportionate benefits went to white veterans because if you were a veteran of color, the employers, you know, because theoretically what the GI Bill did said it said you could get training, uh, you know, to have a job, you could go to college, you know, you get these opportunities, but the employers still had the right of refusal. They still had the right to not hire you, to discriminate against you on the basis of race. Their property rights as owners were given precedence over the right of those returning GIs to have jobs. You couldn't just go to any college if they didn't want to admit you. So people of color were still excluded even after they had served the country in the military. So you had all of these programs, Homestead Act, VA, FHA, GI Bill, go all the way back to the head right system, all these things pumping literally hundreds of billions, one might say trillions of dollars worth of wealth into white folks' hands before people of color even got to the starting gate of wealth accumulation by the time the Fair Housing Act came around. And if you know anything about the Fair Housing Act, which wasn't even passed until 1968, you know that for the first 20 years, neither Democrats or Republicans thought it was important to put enforcement mechanisms in. So there weren't even any enforcement mechanisms until 88, right? I mean, so 20 years, it's, it's on the books, but it doesn't mean anything. And even now, we know that there's evidence of discrimination. I'll speak to that in a second. But the point here being, that's why I find it so interesting when those folks in the Tea Parties and all this stuff that are angry about healthcare talk about they want their country back the way it used to be when government was small. What date was that? Because government was never small for white people. Never was it small. Taxes were not lower back in the day. How taxes were, top tax rate in 1958 was 91%. It's less than half that now. Whether you think it should be even lower, let's not pretend that we want to go back to the way it was when taxes were low. Taxes were higher. Government was just as big. And white folks didn't mind it when we were the only ones getting benefits. <laughs> I'm going to stop it right there, D. I'm going to let y'all watch the rest. I want to make sure we got all that information out and make sure you all got a chance to see what's been happening, what's been going on, where where everybody is at, what's going on in life. <laughs> uh, you know, and, you know, I want to make sure that we clarify this. We're not saying running the Victim Olympics. This would, no, That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying this. We know these things exist. Here's a <laughs> little... <laughs> what is the Victim Olympics? Yeah, I'll give you it. Do you know these things exist? All right. So what are we gonna do to 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 not combat them? But we know these things exist. How do you play within the parameters? How do you do? How do you get things going? Right. That's what I want to talk about. Right. Um, charging be okay uh, for a uh, black family is more money. Eighty five versus forty five rent. Be okay vets came back could barely get a home. Yep. Yep. Yep, and a lot of them came back. That's another thing too. What we what's that that hadn't been talked about? It's not just the 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 the, the access to the benefits. A lot of them came back just messed up, mentally messed up, uh, physically messed up, and also introduced to to new things that you know new. Uh, I don't want to say diseases, but chemicals a lot of them came back messed up right and so a lot of ju a lot of things have have been swept under the rug so that's why i'm telling you whenever you're talking about wealth accumulation you now control this narrative you control how much you can leave to other people and what they can do with it Stop selling all y'all land. Stop, stop not paying taxes on your land. Stop sitting there and like, well, they, if, if this side of the family ain't going to do it, we ain't doing it either. Stop. Keep the wealth in the family. Keep that wealth in the family. Keep that going. And if your aunts and, and, and uncles don't want to do it. Good cousins get together. If the cousins don't want to do it, you do it. And if and if, and if don't nobody do it, then the, guess what? We've already seen that 3.5 million black families have a, a negative net worth 
and another 7.8 million have a net worth of 10,000. You can go buy a piece of a piece of property, as I like to say, for 10,000. <laughs> a piece of property is what I call it. All right. Uh, Mercedes, thank you, DN10, for all that you do on the way to 200K and greater. That's right. I like the and greater. You already know how I'm feeling about the and greater. Um, I am all about that. Victor, you are another uh, Linux expert. I'm a, you, Victor, you know the, the the ongoing question. They always say it online. Don't shame the people. Don't shame the people. Vim, VI, or Pico, Victor. That's going to really determine your, your net worth over here. Ugh. Right. But again, um, let's get back to it. Uh, when we talk about wealth accumulation and so forth, I talked about it last week, and it's my last little one. B. Uh, <laughs> that's it. That's it. I stop telling me lies. I'm not. I'm not. Stop, stop telling me lies. Ain't, I, nobody, ain't nobody coming you up. You are telling tall tales and fables. Stop telling me lies. No, stop, I don't appreciate it. I'm a big girl. I can take it. As I'm a big, me, I'm I'm a big girl that now. I want to do. Take that. You're a big girl now. All right. Wealth protection stage. All right. Wealth accumulation stage. All right. Here we go. Wealth preservation stage. And wealth distribution stage. And everybody's at all different ones of these, right? So, okay. Just want y'all to know that, right? Wealth distribution stage is the last one. Wealth preservation. Wealth accumulation. And wealth protection stage. So let me give you that. I'm going to give you this one. And you can go online and look up different ones, like how some people put it together. Like I saw another one in there that says uh, there was 11 different ones. But again, I want you to be cognizant of, of these things as we talk about wealth accumulation, wealth or wealth preservation, right? Wealth distribution, right? Wealth dis distribution is super important especially as you get older. And even if you are not older, talk about this with your parents. I have this conversation with my mom. I have conversation. I even have conversations with Dee. We, we have to have that conversation about what, what's, what's happening, right? I don't, 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 don't just let your parents or significant others tell you like, yeah, I got you. What was that? Oh, that's what I was looking at. Dave Ramsey. Let me bring that back up. I had I had D looking at it. Lady 71 years old. Her and her husband were um, um, uh, getting ready to go out to the grocery store and he died. He put on his jacket and she said he just fell out. And he was she was 71. He was older than her. And she said uh, she called into the day Ramsey show and she was like. I don't know if I'm going to have food on Monday because I don't know how to get money. And I don't know. I just know that I got a letter in the mail that I escrow went up a thousand dollars and I don't know what, what, uh, what's going on. And he was like, well, do you know how to get money out the bank? Do you have food to last you to Monday? She's like, I got, I don't eat much. So I got something. Don't be that person, man or woman. Don't be that person. Well, you're sitting back, and this is why I get angry about this whole sphere thing. Women, man, red, blue, green, purple, yellow, white, orange, beige. Listen, this is where I get mad at. If nobody ain't telling you where the, where the money resides <laughs> before they pass away, God damn it. 
shit. Dang damn it. <laughs> damn it. So my grandmother said, you better get his social security number first. I <laughs> 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 love it. Let baby get his social security number. Jesus. <laughs> Oh, bring up the footage on the on the black dots. <laughs> they don't want that. We'll be here another hour. We can't do it, Kelvin. We can't do them like this. <laughs> Listen, if y'all not putting in beneficiaries when you got your 401ks and stuff, and this is another one that came up too. <laughs> one of the ladies called in and said, my husband died, but the beneficiary is his ex-wife. But I've been with him for the past 20 years. I'll be going to knock on heaven's gate. <laughs> you behind the scenes, D. We can't see you. <laughs> Good. I want them to hear me. I'll be knocking on heaven's gate. Excuse me, Lord. <laughs> Lord. <laughs> is Henry in there, Lord? I need to talk to him right quick. Lord is Jesus, Henry help out. me. Because Lord, I don't want to have to fight Bertha about these coins. What are we gonna do, Bertha? Right. There was another one. These are these are these are the some of the ones that I that I that I highlighted in my mind that I was like, hell no. The guy was 49. The the girl was 24. But the way the story went was. He hid from her that after they got married, he hid from her that he was $200,000 in debt. And she, he wanted her to take, he wanted to get full custody of his son. But his son had issues, like he was on the spectrum. And his son had developed, had, had, had um behavioral problems as well too he was a little violent and she was 24 and she was like dave i don't know what to do he was like he was like well he's like is he is is he is he physically and verbally abusive to you and she was like yes he was like do you want out he was she was like yes she was, he was like, do you have any money? He, she was like, no, I don't have any money. I don't have nothing. I'm just here. I just want to get out. I, 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 I don't know what to do, Dave. I, I'm not ready to take on his, you know, his child. And uh, I, 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 I can't do it. And all I'm simply saying to you is this. <laughs> in, in my lifetime. In my lifetime. It pays for you to know where everything is at, how things are to be distributed. If he has other kids out there, you need to know that. So you need to know if if you got to go get Shirley some money, <laughs> if you need to go get Bertha some money, Eugene, whatever, Mary, whoever, whatever, her, whoever, her, whatever her name is, right? You need to know these things. Y'all need to start having conversations and y'all need to be honest with each other because it ain't nothing like sitting at the funeral and you've been married to this man for 20 years and you ain't on the bit, you ain't a beneficiary. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. That's not my life. <laughs> I need to see the paperwork. That's not my life. We need to <laughs> that's not my life. That's not how this is gonna go. I don't even trust you like that. I need to see with my ojos already myself. I need to see the paperwork. I need the folder. Where is the, I need the folder? I need to know where the folder is at. We need to have the folder together so we can figure out what's going on with those kids of yours gonna get what we got what 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 we what we do what we doing before i got married before i got married i said hey 
you've never been married. I've never been married. I was like, but I do know in order to get a home and build a life together, we need to have A, B, C, and D. Now, right now, as it stands, do you have insurance? Do you have medical? Do you have this? Bump me. I'm a grown person that can take care of myself if the shit hits the fan. But you are a father. You need to have these in place. And I don't even want my name on it because we are dating. But your children need to be taken care of just in case anything happened in these wild Atlanta streets. Because we out here. We in these streets. Period. Needs to happen. This is dating. This is just dating. Period. This was going. The insurance man is coming by the house. This is when the insurance man come by your house and take the swab. Dating. And when this happens, this is how we do bills. This was going on. If we get married, A, B, C, D, and E. Like, I don't understand why people don't have these conversations. Like, you're not about to. You No. It, it just does not make any sense. You were dated. You you were married to a military man, so you know Uncle Sam wasn't playing that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here you go. It's, here you go. Yeah, here it's you, automatically power, 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 power. over. And uh, when you don't know, they'll tell you so that you can find out. They that's a whole another problem. But there is no reason. Oh, he had titanium credit. Like I didn't even know what that was. He had better credit than I didn't even know what 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 is that. Let me go read. <laughs> what is that type of stuff? I we you need to know because a marriage, a part, it's a partnership, it is an arrangement. You need to know what you guys can and cannot do, and if you want to do things, it helps you plan to get there. You cannot plan your future, your present, if you do not know what's going on with each other. It just doesn't make no sense. Like the part of marriage is a business deal. It's always been a business. <laughs> if you look at the movies when they were in the parasols and the boussier, marriage has always been a business. Marriage was about two families coming together, bringing their wealth. Was. Life came with with some paper. Period. Point blank. It is a business. It's never not been a business. It's never not been a business. But how can you grow even? Even as me and Tam are friends and business partners, there are certain things we have in place for ourselves as friends and business partners that are intertwined in certain things. It makes sense. It makes sense. And if you don't want to, even if you have a life partner, like she said, get it in writing. You don't have to have marriage in the traditional sense. But you need to have those things planned out. You don't want that stuff going in probate. You don't want to be fighting family that you hadn't seen or spoken oh, no. to in years. You don't, you, I mean, and things happen. Things happen quickly at the blink of an eye. You just never, never know. But to go into something blind and have Henry just making sure the house is taken care of and you look up and you eating cat food that ain't the business that's 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 not the business like what i said my grandmother told me maybe get a social security number make sure you have your social security number i didn't know what that meant as a kid it doesn't make any sense any partnership that you have you need to know what's going on in order to move on in order to plan no, I'm tired. I'm with that, right? And 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 the reason why I, I I keep talking about wealth accumulation and so forth and so on, because I be looking at some of these panels across YouTube everywhere, and y'all don't make business sense. It just don't make sense to me. Yes, cat food. When when. The let me tell you, when the shit hits the fan with the economy, people, the, the dog food, the cat food is missing off the shelves. That stuff goes. People are eating pet food. The stuff in the can on crackers. Trust me. You think I'm playing? 
You think that's a cat lady in front of you get, buying all that stuff for her cat? That's food. That's a meal. That fancy feast, that lady might be eating that. That man might be eating that. Even if, even if King Tao, if you even you you want to shack up, like I said, I was just dating. I was in an exclusive relationship and we fought, we decided to move in together. But I had a long list of what needed to be happening before that happened. Because if I, if we are getting married, then this needs this needs to happen. Because this is about security, not only for a woman, but only also as a man. If that's the case, we both had our own places. We went and ditched our own places and got a place together. Because I didn't want him to feel like I can put him out of my house or vice versa. It's all part of building. It's how it, and if that's who you want to be with. Everybody doesn't do things traditionally by the book. It, it's just not going. It's not even fair to say what that is for people. People do what they want to do, but you gotta make sure that you got your shit in order. Period. No matter what it is, be very clear. Be very intentional about where you're going and how you're gonna get there. <laughs> uh, whatever that is it's what demands are you talking about what demands are you making on a man and he gonna chuck the deuces he didn't make he had he had a list as well if you guys are not coming together with a list of things that you you want and need from each other then that's a problem <laughs> i don't know what you're talking about I think everybody has a list of demands. Period. And when I would have issues with my husband, I would ask for advice from another married man for that. Sorry, sure, sure, oh, here we go. <laughs> so where I, I don't understand why couples don't have communication. One is not exempt, is not demands. This is what I need. If you can't come to the table of what you need, then it's going to be a problem. I'm not gonna send a drone to nobody's house about nothing. I don't care. <laughs> no, but that this is real. Like for a man, you should have that again. For a man and a woman, let me say it this way: you both should be talking finances. Like you, I don't, I don't see how you all date each other without talking about finances, right? In terms of 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 does she have debt does he have debt uh uh and and here's the other one too some people are like it's a package deal my mama come and live with us as um and and these come from men this ain't coming from a woman this come from men some men are like my mama coming to live with us whatever we do my mama coming and I dated a guy and he made it clear, like, my mama is coming. Wherever it, he end up, da, da, mama, we're going to have to have space for my mother. Right now she is fine, but if it hit the fan, she's coming. Yeah. I, don't, I don't understand. People don't operate the same. If, how can you plan if you don't know what's on the table? That's chess. You can't, I mean, it just, it's logical. How do you plan when you don't know? How do you plan? Yep. Yeah. How, how do you plan? I mean, and you know, shoot, what's his name? Um, That was in Hotel Rwanda, Don Cheadle. Mm -hmm. Him mm -hmm. and his wife were together for over 20 years. 20. Over 20 years, two kids, life partners, he just recently got married a couple of years ago because of some tax stuff or it just, it made financial sense for them finally to get married. So everything is relative. So I can't tell Tam what to do with her person. She can't tell me what to do with my person and vice versa. And, and out here in the world, we can't tell you what to do, but we can give you a guide to what needs to be happening. It just does not. Some women don't want to get married. Some men don't want to be married. 
Those people will find each other and live happily ever after. But I'm pretty sure they're gonna have an understanding. Hey, look, people get people get mad with me when I talk about some people want to get married, but they don't want to live in the same house. <laughs> they got an understanding. Uh, it, is, it is to each his own. Marriage is not monolithic, and and I, who am I to judge that work for them? It may not work for you, but it work for them. Um, but again, like I say, um, I, what it boils down to is that that whole wealth distribution that we're talking about, that four stages of wealth. You all have to start looking at how are you going to accumulate this wealth, and how. Are, or what directions are you going to leave behind for this wealth distribution? You can't sit up here and talk about like, hey, I'm, I'm just going to leave them $2 million and then let them figure it out. Don't do that. Put that, make that money stretch and make it work. Right. right? Not only with your spouse, you need to be talking about what's going on with your parents. And you said, we at, we're at an age if any I mean we need to know what's going on with our parents and if they don't have what they need preparing them because you don't want to have those fights and arguments or whatever I saw my mother simply you need to have it in writing if not I'm gonna make you into a gemstone and wear you around my neck here like those are important conversations and they're uncomfortable conversations because everybody wants to be here forever we want to live forever. We're never going to die. But those are conversations that we have. And you can have those conversations respectfully. Mm -hmm. But you need to, it definitely need to do family planning, estate yep. planning. Anything that you have, you need to know where it's going. Yes, I said a gemstone. I told her I was going to make her her birthstone, which she hates. And now just let her know how serious I was. I'm going to make you into a gemstone. And we're going to wear you around our neck. I will switch off between the kids. Like you need to have it in the paper. Cause my mother is the type that's like, oh, it's under the mattress. <laughs> you be the executor or just give it to your siblings. I am not doing that. I will walk away first. I don't want to play those games. And it needs and parents and especially um what are they? They the boomers, the boomers too. They so elusive. I mean, they act like you just trying to know all their business. I don't want to know your business. I just want to know your wishes. Because when if anything happens, I just want to know what you want. Mm -hmm. And and that's the other thing too. We have to have the um you have to, you got it's a, it's a tough conversation to to discuss, but you're gonna just have to bring it up and and lead by example. Like, so this is what I'm doing to make sure X, Y, and Z. Oh, mom, if I pass away, I have this X, Y, and Z set aside for you to be okay, and it's gonna go to X, Y, and Z. And then, well, here's the other thing: you don't have to put people in your family as a you know to run your estate, right? You can. You can leave, you can leave instructions and say to a trustee, yep, or to it. a family friend, yep. somebody that you trust. Because I know I can't give my mama no cash. I, I'm going to buy the thing that she needs. Some people you just can't give them no money. We talked about that on the other show. Like you know, you can't give certain people no money. You just know it. You be like, mm, that ain't a good idea. They <laughs> they not go to. No, they're just not a good steward of money does not make them bad people. They are just not good stewards of money. So uh, uh, drop in the chat who you would leave $5 million to. Now, I did D7 million. I, I did D with 7 million. Who would you leave? Pam asked me if something happened to her and she left me $7 million, would I tell anybody? And I told her no. And she's like, why? I said, it's just like hitting the lottery. I don't want anybody counting my pockets and I want to live a very peaceful life. I don't want to have any expectations from people that feel like they're entitled to what you have given me. And knowing you, I said, you're going to leave instructions on what I'm doing with that $7 million. So it's not going to be my $7 million to myself. So I'm not even worried about it. But why even create havoc for myself and disrupt my peaceful life for some BS? 
It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> uh, Ken J, you say you have to understand most men don't want to hear all of it. depends on the man. It, it it really depends on the man. Now, it's it's a lot of my male friends that I get on the phone with, and we talk about wealth building. We talk about insurance. Do you have insurance on yourself? What is happening? What's something happening to you? Dude, I just I just had that conversation with three of my guy friends last week. Um, and and any guy that I have that I date them that I date seriously, we have those questions. We have those conversations with each other because we're just not, we're just, it's, it's, it is, it is about, okay, what's going to happen? Like if we, if you and I get married, uh, what's going, what, what, what's, what are the boundaries? What are the things? What does the wealth look like? But, oh, babe, nah, you ain't got to worry about none of that. I'm going to make sure you written into the policy. You pick out what X, Y, and Z and, and you do X, Y, and Z. That, those are things that, you know, that those conversations that I have, um, everybody can't have that conversation and so when you you have to ask yourself if that's a person that you want to be with i was about to say if i if a man is coming to me and he don't want to hear none of that stuff he's not my man he's not my guy because i shouldn't have to trick you into talking about our future because i am not excessive but i like quality things i like a quality life period it doesn't mean that you are flamboyant. There's just certain luxuries, like having a washing machine and dryer and the water and the house and the yeah, electricity and the we bills to pay. pay. Some people don't want to rob Peter to pay for Paul. Somebody, some people want three hots in a cot and they diaper change when they get old. Like, it's just life. To say you want anything less, you're just not my person. Yeah. Period. I want a man that's coming to say, you know what, what, what's, what's going on? You got bad credit. What, what do you have? What are we doing? If, if it's yours, it's yours. If it's mine, it's mine. Okay, so how we, how do we move together, together with with this stuff? It doesn't mean we have to co mingle anything in the beginning when you come to the relationship with. But moving forward, how are we going to build, or how are we going to live? Because some, it you know, a lot of conversations are about who can do what for what. But when you get into space, it's about your companion. And when you are into somebody and somebody's into you and you want to live with this person, build with this person, some of this stuff, is ju it just is what it is. Now, what you call it said, as a single woman, I have to have things in place for finances as well, down to earth said this, as well as and finances as well since it's just me i'm not um leaving a financial burden on my family if i get ill and i'll die so i talked about this too for men and women who are single and i brought this up to a couple of friends of mine who are single who don't want to who are men that don't want to get married at all they don't want to live with a woman at all they don't want anything to do with um having someone in their space and um, I, I looked this up. Um, there are um, long-term health care insurance plans that you can get, but there's also, you can go and retire on a cruise ship. You can also retire at home and have someone come into your space. And I talked about this earlier, and is you have to start looking at your life. And I said this on the show earlier, a lot of people think because I'm 22 and I'm 23 and I'm 25 or I'm 30 and I'm 35 that you can't have a stroke. That you can't, you can't go get hit by a car. You can't go hit. You can't go fall car. off a bike and hit your head on a rock. Like <laughs> you get paralyzed um, from the waist down or from the neck down. That these things can't happen to you, and you have to. You need to get things in place. But in order to get things in place, it costs money to get those things in place. But if you are young enough, you don't have to worry about the $1,000 cost versus the $200 cost. But as you get older, the more you have to worry about that. So take care of your stuff early without a woman, with without a man, 
protect yourself. You need to be self-sufficient. Where's I the mean, that's just, that's just being a human being. And Cherie, I honestly, I have to disagree with you. You don't have to be best friends in, with your husband. <laughs> like, there's other cultures that are getting in arranged marriages, and these people are strangers. They don't know them from a hole in the ground. Like, you don't have to be best friends. You cannot get along 100% of the time. You can agree to disagree. But I do think, I do feel you need to have a mutual respect for your partner. So, I'm, Kenji, I'm going to give you this one. You said men worried about getting getting their stuff snatched. Let me tell you this, that when I go talk to wealth managers and when I first moved down to Florida, every last one of them told me as a woman, before you ever get back in any relationship with any man, as I was going through a divorce, you need to have him sign a prenup. So the women need to have men sign prenups too. Prenup. <laughs> right? There are things given to women because people act like, I don't know why people act like women don't have families that may leave them something. Just like that young lady who got $1.25 million from her from her employer who passed away. Before she goes to step into a marriage with a man, she needs to get a prenup. There's paperwork that you, if those are worries that people have, you can work out arrangements for all of that. Let her walk away, KJ. Period. <laughs> That's okay. Period. Can Everybody away. can move on. But people can, can move why, on. Why would they, are, why? they have their own, they can walk away from anything. It's their choice. Why would why would a man walk away? Because I asked him to sign a prenup to protect myself. Well, well, hold on. Let me stop you right there. The men that I know are like we understand, Tamika. We're signing. We're signing the prenup because I want you to sign my prenup. Because, <laughs> so. like I said, if we're both coming into the marriage with things, with our own stuff, if I get married today, I have to have a prenup because. I have businesses with another person that I'm contractually obligated with. Tam is not getting married. I'm getting married. So as Dion has to protect Tam's interest and the business in interest, it's a fiduciary responsibility for yourself, period, period. I know so many women that's walked away from their marriages with nothing. Keep it. Matter of fact, let me give you some stuff. I don't want none of that. We good. See you on the up and up. Deuces. Have a nice life. We don't want any of that. People that complain the most, they ain't got nothing no way. <laughs> they ain't got nothing. You ain't, you ain't even got nothing. You complaining about something you ain't got or you can potentially have. If y'all both is working with dust, what's the problem? More dust. <laughs> what I mean, what? Like, if I got it and you got it, we if we leave, you got yours, I got mine. But what we have accumulated together, this is what we got to deal with. This little pot in front of us. You ain't worried about mine. I'm not worried about yours. We're working with this. But if we are, if we over there fighting about dust, we ain't got lint in our pockets. Oh, like my grandmother say, a pot to piss in and a window to throw it out of. What's the problem? KJ, I don't know about men walking away to move on with their life. I don't know. I, I, that wasn't, that wasn't my, my experience with divorce. That was the, wasn't my experience. That one, that, that wasn't even, that wasn't even on our, um, even on our on our on our minds when we were getting divorced, our our goal was like, let's get divorced so you can move on, and do what you got to do. I got to do what I got to do. Um, do you need anything before we before we part ways? No, you don't need nothing. Oh, you want this? Okay, cool. Let me get you that. Oh, you want this from me? I want that from you. Cool. Let me get you that. It, again, when you are uh, when you are a mean and nasty person, that's when all that other stuff comes into play. Um, and 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 divorce brings out mean and nasty people sometimes. It brings out brings out some of the true colors of who you really are as a person. But if you are if you two were uh uh are amicable amicable to each other are and actually looking out for each other's best interests, you don't have that problem. Um what I what I often see 
and this is another thing, just my own personal thought. Um, if she comes in with nothing and you are in a relationship and she does not work, and she does not work the entire relationship, men are often like, damn it, I got to give her something. So to me, I don't know, this is just my own little random thought. I could be absolutely wrong. It's better if she got something when she come in. <laughs> That's just, just my own little random thought. Uh, so so that, that she can be afloat and stable. That's just my thought. May not work. People always like men don't I worry about it. Into, if you don't have any paperwork and you do get married and say she you she does she was a waitress, whatever, and then she didn't have a couple of kids and she didn't birth these babies and made yourself a home. If your character, whether whoever you are, I'm not even saying men, men, male female relationships. It could be two women, it could be two men, whatever. If you meet your partner and they were a waitress, and y'all started a family and one person stayed at home. If your character says that she came with nothing and she leave with nothing, that's a whole nother story. But Kenja, you say men don't worry about women's money. I'm gonna tell you from a woman's perspective. Tell that to Kevin yeah. Federline, Brittany's ex-husband. He took them kids and a check. You do. <laughs> like you do. It, it doesn't make any sense. You do. And, and, and again, it's not all men. It's men dependent. Men say that men don't worry about women money, but you do. And I'm telling you from a woman, you do. <laughs> you, like the guy, like the little boy say, like, low, low, like back at the house in the low, long time ago days. You do. You do use those for your butt. <laughs> <laughs> to say you don't care. You but, may but not also, care. There are times, like, for, and I can only use myself as an example. Luckily, in my marriage, I was the afforded the ability to say F you to any job that I did not like. If I came to work one day and I was over it, I can chuck up the deuces and go home. If I wanted to start a business and hobby, I can do that. However, I put my money in the kitty. And, if my, and if my money went into my bank account, whatever. But when we had an issue and we had financial issues, and to me, it wasn't an issue. But for him, it was an issue. My money came out my account, no questions asked. Nothing. Because it's the character of your person that you choose. You choose your person. My money came out because you know what? I had gotten the ability to do what I wanted to do. So you know what? Don't worry about that. I got us. Now, you might be tripping because you used to having us, but I got us and you now you in your feelings about that. But this is a partnership. This is this is this I it's, it's it is what it is. Like I'm not I who am I to say I'm going to watch my husband struggle? That shit don't ever make no that sense. That don't make no sense. Why would I want you to struggle? That don't make no sense at all. Why Why do I want us to struggle? <laughs> why would I not get off my ass to go get a job? Like, why would I not do that for us? Why would I let you sit there and sock in whatever you're sulking in? But you can only do it for so long before you have to pick yourself up by your bootstraps and get back in the game. Yeah, and no, nobody. Life nobody. is a game. You play to win. You play not to not lose. Yep. I'm like, I like. I again. I don't. He was in his feelings because a lot of men, and especially men in, I can say around their forties, we just so happen to be in that generation where we have a missing generation, where some of our fathers they didn't live in there. A lot of them succumb to drugs. And a lot of our men this age learn how to be men from their uncles, people from the neighborhood, what they saw on TV. So a lot of that was my husband get the big piece of chicken and providing provision is purely financial. And because I provide for you, 
you, I have the most control in this relationship because I am the provider, meaning monetary money. But provision for people who have some sense, mean provision is more than financial, it's mental, it's physical, it's spiritual. So when people who only know how to provide one way lose what they feel is power, then it messes with who they are as a person, whoever that may be. And so they feel like they can't, the, the things they used to do in order to move like they were when their character wasn't above board and they feel like they can go sprinkle it, something on it. So the sprinkle little dollars on it and it'll go away. No, you didn't sprinkle nothing on that thing. It becomes a problem because for a lot of men, I'm going to say that because the conversation, the question was about men. Money is control. Money is power. And so when you don't have no money, you feel like you don't have no power. Mm-hmm. When all you think of yourself as money. Is, pro- is money. And that's as what money. My and that's ex-husband, what- I'm just going to say it here because we family, he said he felt like a trick. I said, because you always leading with your po- your purse strings. Put your pocketbook up. But that's something that he needed to learn for himself. That's something I couldn't teach him. That's his feelings. That's how he felt about himself. I, could, I can only tell him how I care and love and nurture or whatever. Can, but that's Kenji, your own Kenji, 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 we understand Kenji, that. Kenji, they own bag and bag. Everybody got a bag. It ain't just the bag lady. It's the bag man. Everybody got a bag. Yeah. Give your stuff out your bag and fill out what's your feeling behind this. What's your feeling behind the money? Yep. And Ken J said uh exactly the men need to have some powerhouse. We don't have that. The house is out of order. This is why women money doesn't matter to us, but it does. That's it knew because when y'all don't have it, y'all lose your mind. That's what you lose your, you, 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 it you, matters. You get ugly, your spirit be bad, y'all be around here talking crazy looking crazy and then you're about to be losing your wife because you don't know how to act because all you have is that little pocket change Mm -hmm. and it ain't no money it ain't no money it ain't enough money to be going through that because at the end of the day when you lose your wife and you lose your family and you be sitting there on top of your money by yourself alone and sad and that one dry ass tear go down your (laughs) your cheek and then you be like Man, I wish my I wish I miss my wife. Did she y'all hear what Shaq kids. said? I miss my kids. <laughs> this money show, this money show ain't keeping me. Show don't love me like if she did. My kid, where it don't show don't love me. Right. Stuff is, it come and go. It come and go. It come and go. Uh, I told KJ he know he come up. He know he got the link. But we know KJ can't come up because I'm about to go eat and I don't want to be talking no uh craziness. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I, 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 I was just I was if just if you find a link before I get off, that's one thing. But I'm not about to have no arguments about this. I'm too old about this and some money. Period. I didn't see plenty of money. I didn't see dust. I didn't see length Yo. in my pocket. Yo. I ain't gonna have no problems about no money. Yeah. And then that uh, Money should never be no problem in your yep. relationship. That should be the last problem. Yep. If you got two able-bodied people, y'all can go. You'll be all that's right. What I, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, money? We 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 talking about practice. <laughs> We're not going to have this conversation about no money. That's not what we're going to do. Nah, we're not having that. That's not going to be a conversation about, about oh, whether or not uh did you pay the light bill nah that's we're not having that we're not having no conversation about no light bill we ain't have no conversation about no car note we ain't have no conversation about no we have no conversation about no credit that's not even that right there that that the the, the people that i talk to we straight we that conversation we already done had that in fact we don't even we don't even hang out with people that that look like they got bad credit <laughs> You look like you got better credit. We're not even having that. That's just something that we're just not doing. And and, and, and ma'am, I mean, I had a fairly traditional marriage. Like I said, we we laid a lot of foundational things 
ahead of time. We did. He didn't have to worry about no food. He didn't worry about no clothes. He didn't he didn't worry about nothing. He didn't worry about his kids. And they didn't even come out of my body. He didn't have to worry about any of those things. But again, you have to know who your partner is and what you're getting into. Yep. Period, point blank. Because everybody's relationship is relative. Mm. My best friend at the time, she wanted her husband to be a stay-at-home husband. However, she always had a garbage bag by the door with his stuff in it. That was their house. She told me when we got when I got married, I went from Oprah to Noprah. I had no advice for her because she was like, "Oh, you were so strong. You were so independent, girl. If you try to you talk about going to school full time and working these three jobs with independent girl, I'm tired." I am tired. I am finally grateful that I can go sit down for a minute and just whoop saw and figure out my next steps. Period. Period. Strength does not equate to control. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. What works for you works for you. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. I've been many, many, to a many type of woman to a many person in my lifetime. It's what works for you, period. If you want traditional, you want to go run the house with an iron fist and the purse rings, it's somebody out there for you. If you want a stay-at-home husband, somebody's waiting for you right now. If you want to be by yourself and run these streets, you have the ability to do all of that. That's your business. Mm -hmm. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care what you like, do. No, thank, thank you for the uh, super sticker. The ten dollars super sticker. No, uh, well, Kenja, I think so I see Kenja. I think you haven't been on the receiving end when men tell women they can hit the streets anytime they want to. Men do the same thing to women. We do it to each other. That's what cracks me up about all these conversations. Men tell women to get out all the time. And you know, I'm not gonna put the this person uh out out there. I'll just say this. Y'all gotta get control of your anger and you gotta get control of what you want. Um, you gotta understand that, you know, Ken Jay, you want you want a traditional marriage. You don't care about the woman money, go to Wendy's, go to Kroger, go to Publix, find you somebody. She working, she ready for you to come on in, right? <laughs> Go find you somebody because you don't care. Again, you don't care. I ask men all the time, do you want a woman that works or do you want a woman who's going to be at home and she may and may not know what to do? Let me tell you, every woman don't know how to cook. Every man don't know how to do finances. You just, it, 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 you don't. Like, stop it. Not every man got good credit. Not every woman got good credit. Find a person that works for you, that you're willing and able to put forth the effort with and then go forward, right? And when, over in these spaces, we're talking about getting 200000 People are like, oh, well, the woman shouldn't be making 200000 because she's going to disrespect the man and, and all this, that, and the other. Look, I don't care what it is that y'all talking about when it comes to that. All I'm telling you is you got wealth accumulation and you got wealth distribution. How y'all gonna divide this money up that you that you're making and how you gonna how you gonna have your family distribute that? How are you gonna get this tax free and how are you gonna get this tax deferred? Period. Everything else, you're gonna figure that in the wash. If you ain't cool with what she got going on, get a prenup and a post prenup. If you don't wanna be married, y'all just wanna be partners. Find you someone that you want to be partners with. If you want polygamy, go get that too. If that's what you want. It's somebody it's out there for everybody. everybody in the universe. It's enough. Whatever you're looking for, you can have it. Yeah. Don't force your shit on me. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Because some days I'm feeling froggy and I and some days I don't feel like it. Like it is oh it's okay it's so so okay you can have whatever you get yeah, whatever you want but sometimes some of this stuff just don't make sense like if you got married your college your high school sweetheart even your college sweetheart i don't know 
why somebody would think he has the wherewithal and he knows everything to lead you into the the future of the golden king. like somebody it's it's it's, it's a mutual it may not be the same things that you do because it's definitely not 50 50. you know teddy pendergrass say it's 60 40. sometimes it's 70 30. it is <laughs> it's different it is it's different it's what different. Up, everybody, everybody got their stuff what's up laddie and, and then the other thing too, uh, 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 Kenja, you said your wife made one seventy, but you know she sounds like you know that she's not good with money, but you know this, right? So that's some that's things that you could do to make sure that that's taken care of. Again, I know some men are just not good with money. I could I could listen to that conversation and tell you they ain't good with money. If I meet a guy and he tell me like, oh yeah, I'm 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 getting ready to do this. I'm getting ready to, to do this uh this this event and I'm gonna make fifty thousand dollars off this event and I'm gonna go take it and turn around and I'm gonna go buy I'm gonna go put it into uh building out uh 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 uh, uh after hour spot in Atlanta, then I, I got questions. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, and then some people, I mean, I know somebody that will make money but hate paperwork don't want to don't want to see it won't stuff to uh, magically pay itself and handle itself Shh. don't want to do nothing i know men that be like here baby you you go handle that because i just want to go out here and make the money i know some people that hold their purse strings so tight where you just be like so you're not gonna do nothing. You're just gonna walk around with some holy draws. Like you need some. You need. They come three in a pack. Like everybody's stuff is different. Everybody's stuff. But you gotta watch. You can't blindly let some hire somebody for the paperwork if that's you, you don't watch American that's Greed, Laddie. You must it. know because they will run off with your stuff in a minute. You heard He's Steve Harvey all on your pop. Your pop. You, said, you heard Steve Harvey talking about he he gave them the check to pay the IRS and then they weren't paying the IRS, but they were just deducting the same amount from the check million. from his account. Twenty seven million child buy. <laughs> no, no, it don't make no sense. That's character. It yeah. is character. Some people can't touch too much money. You yep. might just need to, hey, you have your account, I have my account, and this is the house account. This is what's coming out of the house account. Some people just need a house account, but also it's who you marry to. We talk, we, me and Tam had these conversations all the time. Can your husband come home with a big car and not check in with you? We gotta have, like, I want to know. I wanted to be there and see, like, you just making these life decisions. I mean, not that I'm going to tell him no, but I would like to be a part of the process. I want to drive in and smell the brother leather just like you. I want to go through the process. Like, you just got to find your person. You don't have to, you don't have to downtrod and step on everybody else's parade because you are looking for something specific. Yep. And, That's the, your other, business. and the other thing, too, y'all got to figure out who's really good at money. Right. And and also, yeah, I think as a family, and this is something that I always encouraged in my marriage was let's sit down and have a conversation about where we're going financially, like not you make the decision and then you disseminate that information to me. But where are we going as a family? So I understand what I need to do, what my role is, how I play into that making sure I cover my tracks. I, I know my ex-husband got tired of me coming in and be like, well, I went to the store and this is how much I spent. I've itemized everything. Here's the coupons that I've used. Here it is. I want you to know where every money, every dollar went. Because I don't want to have that conversation about money. That's, 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 I don't want to have that conversation. I, I'm, I, that conversation makes me angry. Like, I want to be able. I want to be able to for us to say, "Hey, let's hop on this plane. We're getting ready to go to Zanzibar. We flying first class. Get your bags ready. You need to go shopping. You need something because I need shopping for myself. What you, you need something? You want me to pick you out something? Okay, I'm gonna pick you out something. I'll be back. I don't want to have no conversation where your budget is because you know next month 
you know, we ain't go, uh, you can only spend 200. No, I'm not hearing that. <laughs> I'm not hearing that. <laughs> I'm no, not you're not, you, you, not going to be and count me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make sure. I'm okay. But I mean, to know me is to know, like, I, I am, I am the keeper of everybody's money secrets because they already know how I feel about money. Like I'm going to protect yours. Like it's mine. Like it is what it is. Like I'm not going to do it. Like Tam don't have to, what, she not gonna have to worry about D and no money. She not gonna have to worry about me running off and disappearing with business funds and not that. That ain't even who I am as a person. I don't even want that. Like no. that's what I'm saying. Like I'm like some of y'all not picking good characters. People, y'all not picking care people with good character. Like what happened to that? Like, I like picking people with good character. I be hearing all this stuff on the internet. I'm like, who are you picking? And where are you picking from? <laughs> well, I, I, I don't even I don't even want the I don't even want that karma coming back on me about somebody change. Like, no, don't, don't do it. All right, it's time to go. I'm Everybody not more worried about me going to get something to eat. I need see how Tamika do me. I ain't even had nothing to eat. I'm over here on water. <laughs> That's good. You intermittent fasting. I'm over here on water. I'm over here on water. So I get it. Uh, hold on. Let me read this. Uh, people don't know how to date. That is what it is. Picking bad part. I don't. I, I don't. I'm. I may be strong, but I'm definitely not independent. I'm dependent and codependent like a mug. <laughs> don't get it twisted. <laughs> Do, do not get it twisted. Like, don't get it twisted. I, I am dependent. But, but you know, you know, my thing is about independent, right? First off, I'm being sarcastic here when I say this. A black man wrote that song, but that's besides the point. Um, but <laughs> when it comes to about about independent, I, it is never a. It was never a thing for me or a thought that. I think you should have basics. Having your own place, having a, uh, a, a, a your own place, a car, and paying your own bills is just basics to me. Now, whether you cook or, or you eat out or whatever, however you do that, right? Or you hire a chef. I got friends that hire chefs, and the chefs come in and cook their meals, and they and they got somebody to come in to clean their house, right? I even even when I lived in Seattle, my 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 guy friend he was married, and him and his wife had a live-in babysitter for their first child, and for their second child, and for their third child, and they had a live-in babysitter, and they mom stayed with them here and there. Her mom stayed with them, and his mom stayed with them here and there. So I mean, it again, everybody has their own idea of what that looks like. Well, I mean, my my first home in my marriage, it was two families in there. My ex husband just happened to be a twin. We all lived in the same house because a conversation was, "What are we going to do as a family?" Y'all shared a womb together, so I'm pretty sure everything is going to be connected. We bought one house in an area that was appreciating rapidly and so that we can get to a certain point and so we bought land so when it was time we can go and build our own house our dream houses on that like everything is it's a conversation if y'all if y'all can't talk to y'all person or y'all that's that's a problem like it's a problem like i grew up in san francisco like i've always lived with family like that is what community is that is what your village is it is like we can't do it by ourselves how are we going to what is this wealth how are we building these futures for these kids what is this going to look like for us down the line so the, some of these conversations we too broke to be arguing about nothing <laughs> i'm not about to be arguing about your future wife what she need to be doing she needs to listen to you you got damn right listen <laughs> listen you get her to listen <laughs> Who am I to deny you such pleasures? Right, that's what you need. <laughs> that's what you need. By all means, go get it. Now, when and it come a time where you be like, you ain't got no thoughts about nothing. 
you might get tired you might not but make sure you send her off with a little bit of change so you won't get her back on the curb you found her from <laughs> <laughs> it's just only right yeah so y'all you know i want y'all to uh talk to your families about wealth accumulation what does that look like when you're talking about distribution if you don't have I don't, I, what's so funny is i don't own a car Q, I do not own a car. I haven't had a car in years. I got a bicycle on two flats. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a car. I don't have a car. I can't. I don't have a car. <laughs> Todd talking about whatever you like. Oof. 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 Whatever, whatever you like. Whatever. Everything got a price tag. Everything you can go get whatever you want right now, but it's a price tag for whatever you want. Yep. I my price is peace. If it is interfering with my peace, I am going to tip out the door politely and respectfully, like you know, with your little finger, like you do to church. No, I don't have no car key. I got I got a lift app. I I'm a hermit that stay at home. Like, I don't make my money in the car. How I get around? I have access to a car. But luckily, I live in the city where if I wanted to get to where I need to go, I have access to a car. I have access to, to cars. I mean, I just I mean, I just had a company van and I hit a deer. So it was totaled out. So took, now took I need Bambi to out. Who, who can do it? Took Bambi out. Mm -mm -mm. I, 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 you know, so you know those things. You know, people have, have they have their percent. They assume a lot of things, but that's bad for you for assuming, right? <laughs> Women can't drive. <laughs> well, it ain't that I can't drive. I'm going to get in the car to go get me some food today, but I don't personally own a car. Is a fish place open? Found a new one. Oh, okay. I'll tell you how it is. Oh. But yeah, I don't personally own a car. I traded in my ride for something we got collectively, and it, it, it ain't no big deal. Like, once I think what happens with people is once you've been there and you've done that and you got the t shirt in the mug, like, some stuff is just stuff. If I want to, like, uh, engineering candidate say, if I want to go get a Camry. I'm not a sedan girl. I won't get a Camry. But if I want a car, I can go buy myself a car. If I want a scooter, I can go buy myself a scooter. If I want, if I want a big wheel, I can go buy myself a big wheel. That's not a problem. If somebody want to buy me a, a big wheel, I'm okay with that too. But it's a choice. Mm hmm. And you can buy whatever you want. That's the, that's the, that's what that's what I'm saying. Like you got to get to the point where things are optional for you to do. I, I have the option to go buy a house. I have the option to go buy a multiplex. I have the option to go buy a warehouse. I have the option to go buy whatever car, whatever that looks like. Right? It could be it could be a Lincoln Navigator. It could be a Bronco. It could be an AMG. It could be uh a, a mercedes uh eqs it could be a audi it could be whatever it is that you want it to be you had an option to do whatever it is that you want to do right and so i got some know, skates in there i got some skates with some clay wheels i've been dying to go burn them up but you need to be indoors for that but you can have those no i am not a project manager I manage. Pro I used to manage projects, but I'm not a project manager. I'm just a natural born organizer. No, I was trying to be BMP for five years. It just didn't happen for me. Uh, but that's what it's about, Todd. It's about your quality of life, and when you when you are really looking at those decisions for yourself, you just think about what's the price tag. It, it's not about making D money. It's about the price tag. What's your options? I don't care if you're walking around here with lint in your pocket. You had the choice to get on the bus. You had a choice to walk. What what works for you? You have a choice to get a ride, but your your coworker like everything. 
every choice you make has a consequence mm -hmm. period unfortunately where i stay it ain't even know where to park an extra car <laughs> and matter of fact i prefer to have a boat than a car like you know like things where i'm at now it's about investment and in how the things that i accumulate how they are going to give me a residual income period point blank i'm just working smarter with the money and i'm a minimalist it's just who i am by nature i don't need a lot of stuff i'm always purging things that's why i said i i i, I like a quality life but i am thrifty as hell A bowl house would be nice. Oh, yeah, there's one. It's $20 million. <laughs> that's a bowl house out there. That's $20 million. I looked at it the other day. Yeah, I mean, I showed the work with slippers, too, because I, I work from home. Sometimes it's in your pajamas. Sometimes me and Tam get up every morning, and our, mm -hmm. our, our conversation when we check on each other is our bonnet love moment. We, we come up with our bonnets on, and we have bonnet love. It's just, it's just, it's just what you choose to do. We have people now looking for remote positions just to get some, some of their quality of life back. And sometimes a lot of people will take a pay cut for a remote work because that money that they're losing was part of their life. It was their time on the road. It was their time away from their families. And then they may get it back together again. They might not. But it's what's, what's the price to you? What you willing to sacrifice? I said, you can go do what you want to do. You don't have to be deep. You don't have to be Tamika. You can be authentically yourself. It's the bonnet love moment. It's about, it's like a bonnet love stand up because we got to get to work. Yeah, so, you know, it, it's what you want. It's what you want. I don't think you have to browbeat nobody. You ain't have to, you don't have to be the person in submission. Do what the hell you want to do. If that's what you're looking for, go ahead and do it. Have fun with that. If you like it, I love it. But hit a bolt house right here, D. Let me show you that real right quick. Pull that up on me. Let me start over right here. That's it right here. This one is in Dubai. $4.7 million floating with an underwater bedroom. I got the sound turned down, but yeah, that's what they got. There you go. You go spend a you just go spend a weekend on that. All right, we're gonna start our tour on the exterior on this patio space. First off, our views are incredible. I mean, we have. Dubai skyline right behind us. That's what I'm talking about. about. If and you go on a trip, I won't go. I want to go here. Part of Europe I don't want no problems. I want my little boat out there, and if we decide to have a campfire right back on land, we today. can. We're gonna I want do our all best that. to protect our microphones. I want it all. I want it all. I want it now. We see if we get through it. Here's like some of the stuff they got to show for the bathroom, uh, the shower. Walking up and down the stairs, a little patio action. What you thinking, D? Yeah, it have to stay like stay side because I wouldn't want to go too far and the pirates come get me. <laughs> but it's Dubai, you know. Dubai is landlocked. Oh well, that's just they just floating around in a big pond, right? You ain't going nowhere. You sit outside and have your little little people come through. Have your little chef on here. Got your little uh, uh, shisha. Retired downstairs. You can see the fish. Now, I, I've been wondering, like, what they got in the water. I, would, I will be wondering that. Right? And then you can come out. Um, he go into the bedroom. Let me see if I can get to the bedroom here. That's a, like a little lounge. Shower. Shower. Oh, they don't have a little bedroom. I, I think I would like that, like for a weekend or maybe like a month or yeah. something. I don't think I can go live out there. Yeah, like, that's what I'm saying. Just, little, little, just, just a little, 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 little visit. 
but I don't think I can do that like full time. Yeah, just for a month. Like uh, I could do it for a week. Like if 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 I'm if I'm going to Dubai for a week and we want to go um check it out for a week and then be like, oh, let's work remotely out here. I mean, I think that was cute. That would be cute. Given last time we went to Dubai, it was foggy. So. All right, DJ Darnell, you go. Thank you for coming. It was great having you. And again, thank you for your super chat. We appreciate it. Yeah, the Grand Mosque is pretty. We went, we did a tour of that. Did you eat dinner at the Grand Mosque, uh, Ken J? Yeah, we were going to check for the glass that's extra heavy. Boating, skiing, tubbing down a river, riding a bike. I could do a floating house depending on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they got floating houses in. Um, what you call it in Seattle? <laughs> I guess Noah was on the something. <laughs> you silly. Uh, MM said he he's starting to like D. You saw that? I love D's person. I definitely think I'm developing a thing for dominant, aggressive women. And Todd was like, you interpret her as a dominant and, and or as aggressive. I don't know. I don't know what 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 is. Let me ask this, and, and, and I'm, I'm out. Y'all can leave a comment below this, after this, after this, after we click off of this. Is Does a submissive woman, is she's docile and she's fragile and she can't defend herself? Is that what y'all consider fragile and submissive? Or let me say not fragile, but submissive. She's She can't defend herself. She needs for, you, for Clark Kent to come in and open up the bottle. D, catch me. Oh, God. Catch me. <laughs> Catch me. <laughs> what, how you do it? I'm vulnerable. I'm vulnerable. <laughs> I just want to know. I just really want to know what y'all really be thinking. Like, what? Like, again, I have my own opinions. I think sometimes in conversations, and I'm not going to go there with a b c d f g community there um i think sometimes in conversations i think a lot of things get missed about what a woman is <laughs> what's <laughs> funny let me just pause you right there what's so funny is that men especially the the, the spear men they don't even realize that the women are out here the men in their lives have raised them. So whether they had a father or not a father or uncles or granddad or, you know, your community, like I am who I am based on the men in my life. I couldn't right. be a poop butt because it wasn't no, it wasn't no poop butt people around me. Like <laughs> I was driving by myself at 12. My dad taught me how to drive, not my mom. My father taught me how to drive. My father taught me how to drive a stick because you know what? He didn't want me to be stranded nowhere. He wanted me to be able to hop in anything and get gone. Do you know who taught me how to drive on the freeway and navigate life? A man. Like, oh, <laughs> so it's funny that these traits that, you know, like aggressive and dominant that you perceive, and you might just be poking the bear. <laughs> it comes from men in our lives. But Dion, do you think that uh but do Dion, I'm just I'm just saying, do you think that <laughs> well, for real? The 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 yeah, oh sorry. Ooh, ooh, did I do that? Oh um <laughs> uh I don't I don't know the 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 my um the men that were around <laughs> if I women let if I emulate other women you don't want to see my mama she's a beast <laughs> <laughs> my mama is mean and nasty <laughs> she is a beast beast mode where you be having to go please thank you, thank you. <laughs> where you have to tell her to be nice. We don't emulate women. We Because at the end of the day, literally, 
once women start having their cycle along with women, mothers and daughters really don't get along like that. We reconnect when we're about 30, but usually yeah, yeah from like we be like, oh, I don't feel her right now. Like she she not cool. Like love her. She's my mom, but it'd be something totally different. Like that's just me. Like I grew up with a whole bunch of dudes. Like I like think like I like big I like big cars. I like big I like fast cars. I like big engines. I got a motorcycle license. Like those things that is there. My mother is just she's a tough cookie. Yeah, my she's an Aries. I think she she just that's who they are as people. They just Mm-mm, my, you know, I told you about my dad. My dad was like, uh, so you don't know nothing about the stock market. You don't know that you ain't gonna read that. You ain't gonna do this. You ain't gonna do that. Like, you better not be out here depending on nobody to do nothing for you. You better get out there and figure it out. You're gonna be waiting for nobody. You're gonna be waiting forever. So I don't know. Like, you know, you have to add, I ask this to men that have uh, children uh, that are, or daughters. I shouldn't say children that are female, but daughters. Do you tell your daughter that she need to be waiting for a man in order to succeed in life? Do y'all tell them that? I just want to know. What do you actually tell your daughter coming up now? Like, do you tell them that don't don't go out there and make too much money because a man ain't gonna marry you because you make too much money? Like, what it what are what are you telling your daughters? I'm just curious. Curious. Just curious. You say my grandmother always been feminine killer. Same with my mama. She saved. <laughs> she saved it's hell. But we'll catch a body. Oh yeah. We'll catch a body. And, and, and no and have no problem with catching that body. Yeah, Kelly. Men are raising their daughters. And they are raising their daughters. And my first cousin was a boy. So it was just like he had he wasn't going to treat us differently. Like we it just we did what he liked to do. Yeah. He liked to watch Conan movies. He liked to drive. He liked to have a good time. Like it, it just is what it is. I think everybody is um is is different, but most that's why they say daddy's girls. And they, and I had to ask that question is, why do y'all think that men tell their daughters not to depend on a man? Why? Because they know they be on some BS. <laughs> they, they, they know those characters. They know what's out here in these streets. I'm just asking, why do they, why do men tell their daughters that? Why do men tell their daughters not to depend on a man? <laughs> Look, ladies, if you open up a bottle of bananas, don't just pretend and tell him you don't have the shirt. Oh, yeah, we do it all the time. Didn't I tell you I'm dependent? We lay, in the, we lay in the road all the time. We know how to do that. That's not the problem. The, prob- the problem is that this is what happens in most of the time, especially in conversations, right? Um, and and D and I have been at this. This happened when I was in town. D went to the cigar bar. We was at the cigar bar. D went inside, came back. It was with three or four guys hanging out. Uh, and I was talking to him, right? And we all got to talking and we start. One guy, he's like, I know you from the last time you was here. We had a conversation. He was there with his friend. And the next thing you know, he there with uh, another guy rolled up. A couple of coaches from, 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 the, um, from Tampa rolled up. A couple of coaches from the football teams rolled up. And we all now... Now, D, when D come out, she looking like, where all these guys out here? Where you get them from? I wasn't going that long. <laughs> I wasn't the, going that long. But we got into the conversation of wealth building and accumulation. And we can have, we're comfortable with each other enough to say, oh, you know, what you drive today? Oh, I drove X, Y, and Z. What you drive in today? Oh, for real, let me check it out. What you do to it? Let me see. Let me, let's check that out. Oh, yeah, me and my boy just pulled up and then, okay, cool. Let me check that out. That's cool. That's what it is. Let me see. Oh, I like your job. Oh, I like. 
it's just that kind of conversation. It's not, oh, you got to think that you some kind of man because you got, no. In fact, we've been invited, and I got to I gotta follow through with this, to talk to um, some football players about wealth accumulation and wealth building and what their options are in tech. And um, so we've been we've been at we've been asked, and I just gotta follow through with that because of that conversation. Um, because they're like, and this is the coach. This is not me saying this. This is the coach. The coach was like, some of them ain't gonna make it to the NFL. They're not gonna make it, and some of them need to be shown what their options are if they're not gonna make it to the NFL. Repeat that again, Todd. What your mama said. Because them, your mamas, y'all, y'all, y'all mamas be having y'all sold up as well. So with them daddy say, their mama, I've had friends where I'm just like, girl, you do not like mama's boys, but you attract all the mama's boys. I said, your son is gonna be a mama's boy if you keep it up. I was like, pet the pet the stream. He's gonna be all right. You have to make sure that you have to be securing yourself in your training that he has the tools that he needs to go out into the world. I was like, but you're creating what you dislike. <laughs> we get this stuff from our parents. Yep. We and get this stuff from my parents. And my mom, it, my mom, my mom is mean and nasty at times. She can be really, really sweet at a time, but she wasn't out here running. Right. She wasn't running through a whole bunch. I've known her to be with three men in my life. Don't mean she ain't had more because she talked about it, but they didn't run around and 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 rip and run around me. I don't I don't know that, but we we you're socialized by your people. Mm-hmm. You absorb everything. I mean, this is a fact. Like, until you're six years old, like, you're socialized to be who you're going to be. What you see around you affects who you are as a person. Period. I know. I'm, I mean, I'm no, I'm from the, I'm from San Francisco, California. Who I am, how thick my skin is, comes from my environment. When I moved to Atlanta, I just had to be an observer because what we talk about, how we talk to each other is way more tougher than Southern people that I know. <laughs> Sam called me, me She called me mean for a long time. You so mean. Oh, ah, oh. I have to, so I've learned to be softer over the years, but it's based on the people that you're around. D, D be coming in like this. Yeah. I be like, no, don't do me like that. I need I my eyes. not talking about that again, Shoe Shirley. I she need my eyes. Jugular. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no problems. But I mean, it, it is what it is. Like I said, you can be, do, have everything. Respect yourself. Nope. Yeah, we didn't know. You know what, Kelvin? I'm a little, I'm a little older than Hyphy. I'm I'm a little older than hyphy. I lived through Crunk, which was in Atlanta, but I definitely didn't get go get hyphy. Now I bopped a little bit, but hyphy was was not was not that. Like no, no, no. <laughs> I mean, I, mean I, I I don't know. I'm I'm doing okay over here. <laughs> I'm, I'm so super straight. Is is? I don't know. I, mean, I don't know what y'all call so. Says in all honesty, I have a big close family help. I had too many girl cousins, aunties, uncles, little cousins, et cetera, learned uh all or say and, I guess in and out family. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So I, I don't know. We I you know, I think everybody just had to figure out what it is that you want and what it is that you like and what it is that works for you and go on from there. All right. And if you don't if it's something that you don't don't like, don't deal with it. <laughs> like, but don't don't drag people through the mud because it's not something that you would deal with, right? You have your thing. You have you have your people. It's just what it is. That's what it is. Anyway, so you're saying that women aren't submissive and feminine in real life? I don't know. I don't. Then you we can go down the rabbit hole. I'm not gonna do that. 
<laughs> and I can be like, well, what, 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 is, what is male leadership, right? I can get into that too, right? And that looked different for every woman, right? Every woman likes a man that leads a certain way and has this, that, that, and the other. So that that looks different for every woman, right? Like, mm. so mm. I ain't gonna do it, D. I'm home. <sighs> Could you do me this way? Don't do it. So movie, like it is, guys. I'm a lifetime movie. Like, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, I'm just giving you this one tidbit before we get out of here. If you find a woman that is what your picture perfect ideal for is feminine and submissive, and she's dolled up all the time, hair always done, she lives in her feminine energy all the time. You can't even believe the find that you just got. She was born a man. <laughs> <laughs> that might go viral. Like, like, hold on. How, how, how law order say, do, 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 from the perspective of a woman, and y'all be telling us no all the time. That's so all we got. I'm just, I'm just saying, because I've been a woman all my life. All my life, I had to fight. <laughs> All my life, I've been a I've, I, I, I've been a woman. I was born a woman. All my life, and boy, it is a lot to work. I just turned out. A, <laughs> I just turned down a trip to go to Southern Florida because I was like, "Oh my God, I need to go make a. T I need my nails done, my toes done." I this is hair going to do like it was too much to be ready by the time that he needed me to be ready like yeah what, what if a woman enjoys being a woman and is on all the time. Seven, that person is dealing with the essence and all of the good things characters the, the characters of a woman the essence of who a woman who they think a woman is all the time i've been around plenty of women Plenty. All my life. Feminine, non-feminine, gay, straight, whatever you want. All different types of women. Small, Look, listen, short, listen, tall. Listen, listen, this going this may this may actually get 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 um uh put out there too. This may go viral too. Even gay women don't want to be gay women sometimes. <laughs> They don't want to be all the time. I'm so tired of being gay. Oh, I'm so tired. Of being gay. <laughs> I'm so sick of being gay. I, I, I want to be the woman. <laughs> I want to be a woman today. I want to be a woman today. I, I want to be a woman today. I do not want to be butch today. I want to be a woman. I'm trying to tell you. Hey, y'all, y'all ain't gotta listen to listen. Women try to tell y'all, and then y'all be like, no. Well, we might know we try to tell you for real. Like, that's really what happened. I'm just trying to tell you. I didn't seen it. We like, oh, I'm like, oh, today you want to put on heels and 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 and, and oh, oh, okay. Oh, you know, all you can do, you all you gotta do is say in your head, she's still a woman. <laughs> Let me tell you, real talk. One of my best friends had a girlfriend and she was the 
studly one, the girlfriend. She put on a dress and all type of stuff for me. I was like, girl, that ain't even my cup of tea. Like, <laughs> for her, like it ain't, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't on 24-7. If it's on 24-7, mark my words. I'm just saying, you, you better go check, do some, if you need to ask more questions. You better get a, a DNA test. <laughs> You better ask more questions. Well, I, I, and it's just something that, um, and I'm just trying to tell you, it's just something like sometimes it, as a, as a woman, you wake up one day, you like, oh, today I want to be, I want to be girly girl. I want to do this. I want to do that. I want my flowers. I want this. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh. And some days you roll over, you like, F that. I don't want to do none of that. I don't want to do none of that. And then some days, uh, and then some days you just be like, you know, I think I want to go and just be with the world and twirl and, oh, give me my flowers. Take me as I am. Here I am. Oh, gosh. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, some days, some days you don't, right? But to be on all the time, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And people say, and people come back and say it's not a lot of work if you do it all the time. And <clears throat> what, let's let's calculate the hours. Two, three hours to get your toes and nails done. What, two, three hours if you got to wash your hair? Like, I got to wash my hair tomorrow, so that's four hours. Took me two hours yesterday, three probably. Yeah. I washed it, put it up, twisted like two hours myself. Just yeah. to think if you go, this was myself. Think if you go to the salon. Yep. That's a day. That's a day. That's and a then, day. And then you, and then, like any other woman, if you got your toes, nails, and hair done, you want an outfit. I don't care who you are. You got, or you already got an outfit, or you got some shoes. But it all got to flow. You got to have an outfit. You got to have shoes. You got to have oh, earrings. You get new hair, you got to go outside. You got to go outside. You got to go outside. The doll needs to be seen, honey. You got to go outside with your new hair. Still, it still takes time. Yeah. It still takes time. <laughs> Self waxing takes time. If you can do half of this stuff at home, it still takes time. Mm -hmm. It you can be you can if don't make an and if you don't have an appointment, you gotta probably wait an hour. Yeah, the the whole the whole time the makeup, the hair, the nails, picking out the outfit. Um, you talking about? I I had a friend. I had a I had a I had a I had a friend of mine. She was like, "If y'all want me to go somewhere, you gotta tell me at least two or three weeks ahead of time so I can get my outfit together. Because I need time to go shopping and get my appointments and my stuff done. You can't call. You can't call me on Thursday for a a, a party on Saturday. I ain't going." Yes, this is. Oh, when what after the barbershop? After that edge up in that barbershop and you just take that shower and dusted it off? What? When men come from that barbershop, they ready to go out. Off that fresh lineup and y'all want to come out, you can't tell them nothing. Oh, that, no. be that fresh Beijing? <laughs> no, no, not, no, 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 no. Oh, man. Mm -mm. They no. ready to come out. Don't, don't have a beard and it be lined up. And it be lined up. I, be looking. I ain't gonna even lie. I'll be looking. I'll be looking. I'll be like, you know, you know, I'm a fan of a hairline. You know, I you know, you know, I'll be checking for hairlines and beards. Like when that hairline and that beard off. Mm. Don't be Ooh. looking like that's my central for tell y'all nothing. I ain't ready for that. Rocky like said he was a bad bitch. He needs he needs to be doted on. <laughs> I'm a bad bitch. Yeah. It is the equivalent. Fresh outfit. What? Mm. What? Oh no. Fresh shoes. New shoes. Mm, mm, mm. And you, you know now, men they had that little ball patch at the top. 
that want their hairline because they got all their hair, but they might have like the M's or just that little thin spot in the top. You get your whole unit, like get your whole unit. Everything. They be going to get wave. their unit. They be getting that wave. They when, be like, look, don't, wear, don't like jewelry. Your nice watch or your little sparkles. Yep. They got the they got the got they watch, got they sparkles. What? Be like, I see you coming out with their new shoes on. Oh, and you know I love shoes. I love my shoes. Sam said I'm a flirt, but I am I mm-hmm. love good shoes. I love good shoes on a man. Whole unit. That stuff be brushed down and shining. Just and then you got on some smell good. He got on a nice, a nice pair of jeans with a nice shirt. Looking like looking crispy, looking like new money. I see you. I notice. I like I you. I see, something. I see your shades. I see your shades. I see you. I'm watching. Walking in the room with a little confidence. You know, when, when men walk in the room, they when they walk in to meet their boys, I don't know if you ever noticed this D. When they go in to meet their boy, right? And they come walking down. Right, and they meet their boy, they chest pop up a little higher. So they oh, or don't have a little muscle, you got that <laughs> tight shirt that's tight around here, they tight with the little polo with the tight arms they got in the shmedium. And he getting ready to go in to give his boys uh, that, that hand slap, that chest puff up. They were like, What up, boy? You know what I'm saying? What's up, son? What up, son? You know. What up, son? <laughs> I see it. <laughs> the chest pop up. And this is my favorite one. All men do it. All men with a stomach do this. They have a stomach and they have on their jeans and they have on their belt. And they suck it in. And they were like, yeah, you know, because they got to fix it. They were like, yeah, you know, they got to they, they gotta fix that part right there. So it can lay flat. They were like, yeah, you know. You know, we out here, we out here, we out here. All of them do that. All the ones with stomachs, they do that. I see y'all. I see you with your gut. I ain't mad at you. Dead body. <laughs> Make me feel like you're going to Sakura. <laughs> What's today? It's the 23rd. I, I see them all. We see it all, man. We see it all. I see... I see the men that you and and look, I know the insecure men. We, we know the insecure men. We know the insecure men not because of his quietness. It be y'all posture. Y'all posture be off. You don't even be confident when you walking up to the bar to get you a drink. Y'all don't even have no confidence then. You just be like, they gonna get to me. They gonna get to me. Nah, 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 nah. Walk up with some confidence. Hold your head up. We ain't six pack shaming. It's the truth. Hey, I'll take me a I'll take me a cool one pack in a minute. Matter of fact, if you got too many abs, I don't even think I want you. But I've had abs and they don't want women with abs. Like, just you know. My one with abs, I just I want you to stay in the workout outfit. Like, don't wear just wear the workout outfit. You, you cute, you cute in the workout. You cute in in your element, outside your element. I don't like you that much. Your swig is not swigging. Yep, your swig. Your swag ain't. is in athleisure. Ken Jay say you said Ken Jay you say what 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 the women be doing? Shit, some women don't wear girdles. Some women be letting it all hang out. And let me tell you, the women that let it all hang out get all the men. Confidence. 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 Y'all be like, oh, oh, here, like, nah, she fat. No, them women get all the men. And you talking about, do they get married? Yes. 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 D already done told y'all some men don't like them under 200. I worked for a guy and he was like, they need to be 200. And I had never been no little skinny, skinny, skinny something. He was like, D, you too small. I need them 200, period, minimum. 200 to 250. Other than that, you couldn't even catch his eye. Somebody for everybody. Yep. The universe has it. They don't care about no little stomach. 
They don't care about no little stretch marks. If, in fact, I, I knew a guy, he was like, I'm glad you got stretch marks on your on your booty. <laughs> I'm just saying, somebody out there for everybody, I don't know what, what goes You're on. somebody out there right now. You're somebody know. is sitting next to you cracking jokes. Because I think we got funny, but it's time to go. It's time to go for the place I need to go. I'm. Pr I, I have a feeling my stomach is like they sold out of what I need. You why don't you call them first? I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna get in the car and go. You just going. You just going. You out here in the wind. You trying to see if somebody got a fresh lineup, a good beer. Yeah, I'm going out right. there. I'm gonna drop the top, gas up. When it's dark, they don't even see the little dirt on the car. You ready? You out here in these streets? Ah! I get you. Yeah, I'm going to put on my chucks. I'm going look, on look, look, look. Even Steve, even Ken J, he said, "Oh yeah, oh yeah, I love me some booty uh, stretch marks." Now I told you, I made this up. We agree on something. <laughs> I yeah. told you. You always find common ground or something. You welcome, Billy Walk. That's right. Like I'm trying, I'm trying to tell you, stop listening to these people out here that talking about y'all had hit the road or hit the wall or something like that. The only wall you should be hitting is you getting slapped up against this wall right here with somebody. Bye. So it's time to go. It's get. It's we're still. I'm D. That's Tim. We are women in. Don't Linux. cut me off, D. We're women D, in. Linux. D. Don't do that. Don't cut me off. Oh God! Last time I cl I closed the, the stream and you weren't ready. Your lip was so long for the rest of the night. Uh, don't do that. You was like, but this is a Howie Linux podcast, and we went way over the time. But we gave you know, that I've been drinking plants. I've been drinking plants. I just I just want to. I've already had my fill. My um, don't think I had all day. <laughs> You be me talking some little Buddhist matter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. We appreciate y'all. Y'all stay up. We'll see you. Y'all can dead you... nine o'clock for binary testers, but she didn't let me go to feed myself, so she's missed out for tonight. What? Hopefully tomorrow. You see how she reneging? I'm not yeah. reneging that you didn't let me go eat. You see I'm going to give you something to eat. So that means you ain't coming back. That's what you're saying. I might come back. You ain't coming back. <laughs> <laughs> you on that bullshit. You on that. <laughs> you ain't co you I'm coming back. I live here. No, no, you're going to come back by nine o'clock. That's in 15 minutes. No, it's not. It's 8 47 p.m. Oh. Mm. Right. I mean, you nine broad daylight. No, I mean, nine o'clock my time. I'm going to be look, 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 say, look at Ken J. Ken J say, you can go D. Tam can stay. She, she, she got to get off of this show though. What show? What spin me up one? She got to go off of this show. What spin me up one? I'll stay with the folks. You can stay with the folks, but she got to get off of how we Linux. Wow. So we can't have a 12 hour stream. Meet them in clubhouse. Nah, they ain't the same. I'm vulnerable. I don't give a damn. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot woo me with your feminine wild. I don't even like that. <laughs> I'm vulnerable. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna spin up Clubhouse real quick because D D is acting uh, a donkey right now. So I'm gonna spin up club uh, the fun police Q4. There we go. FP back out. I've been yeah. podcasting since 11 a.m. Like a cop car. <laughs> fun police. You see how she do? Y'all see that she the fun police. 